Napa know-how. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Are you hungry? Yes. I said, are you hungry? You know it. Damn it, Mark. Can I do one paid advertisement without you interrupting me? Then for the hundreds of thousands listening around the world and the millions who won't give the big guy a chance. Oh, let's get ready to eat it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fucking marks of all ages, Feed Me More Nutrition proudly brings to you Wake Up Unlimited Energy, Ice So Hungry Grass-Fed Prebiotic Enhanced Whey Protein Isolate, The Big Guy All Natural Testosterone Booster, and coming soon, Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner. Premium, high-quality sports nutrition. Feed Me More Nutrition, available at FeedMeMore.com and now available on Amazon. And if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. Get hungry. Feed Me More. Welcome to Conversation with the Big Guy. I am the Big Guy Ryback, and I'm sitting here with the one, Pat And we're back again on another uh, action-packed adventure for Conversation with the Big Guy podcast. I want to thank you all for taking us up to over a million downloads. We greatly appreciate that. But before we go any further, I think you have uh, some things you want to say. Yeah, no, thank you guys for everybody. We, uh, we have hit the one million mark, and... Um, that's a good accomplishment. So I know what I have for the goal for the year for downloads, and uh, we are well on our way to that. So um, we can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. Sticking to the old format, guys, Feed Me More Nutrition is now available on FeedMeMore.com. It is available on Amazon also, but it is temporarily off the listings, which we will talk about here in a second on the podcast. But it is also available at I'llPumpYouUp.com. And also here in Las Vegas at Spartan Nutrition. If you're in Las Vegas, you're visiting, check out Spartan Nutrition for all your Feed Me More Nutrition. Wake Up, It's Feeding Time. The motivational book by the big guy is now available on Amazon in paperback, Kindle, and Audible form. Guys, please review. Please share. I appreciate all the uh, positive reviews. And, uh, and it, to me... It, it means a lot, and I can't thank you enough. That, that was a great accomplishment for me, uh, getting that book out there. Upcoming shows, guys. We've got UCW Pro Wrestling, Saturday, April 29th, 7.30 p.m. at the Halifax Forum in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And for all fan mail for the big guy, Ryback, P.O. Box 752-740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. And that will do it for me this week. Okay, on Saturday night, WrestlePro will be back at Starland Ballroom. Diamond Dallas Page, Michael Elgin, Fala ba, Kevin Matthews, Hornswoggle, Moose, you name it. Go to StarlandBallroom.com or WrestleProOnline.com for your tickets. May 20th in Raleigh, New Jersey with Cody Rhodes. June 10th with old Wade Barrett. July 14th will be uh, the return of the big guy, Ryback. Right I haven't told you about that one yet, but... Uh, oh, thanks. Jeez. <laughs> I feel like Austin finding out about that submission match with Brad Hart sitting at home. Cool. <laughs> I have that schedule mapped out till uh, probably November or October-ish. There's stuff going forward. And uh, so WrestleProOnline.com, CreativeProWrestling.com for our big show June 3rd out in Long Island. You Long Islanders listening to this show. And uh, if you want to be a wrestler, go check out that website as well. Again, thank you guys for... 
tuning in. We always encourage reviews that we always read every single week. But just click the five star thing on a uh, on a uh, iTunes, whatever your listening platform is. You know, podcast. Uh, I think podcast automatics or Stitcher or SoundCloud, whatever. Uh, not SoundCloud. Audio Boom. Excuse me. But uh, keep continuing the support of the show. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, if that doesn't happen, it would make me feel very blue, as in Blue Apron, which is the number one Ooh. fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Did you know that their beef and chicken and pork come from responsibly raised animals? Oh, because really? Blue, oh, it definitely do. Those who spend a lot of you know time at restaurants and high-end grocery chains can now spend under $10 for a delicious meal. It comes fresh every single month. Get out. Uh, each... Each meal, believe it or not, it comes with step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card, pre-portioned ingredients that can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. So check this out. Check this menu out. Uh, where's the fucking menu? I can't see it. Uh, this week, fuck, there's three parts of this. Here you we do go. The, you do the best reads ever. I love your live reads. <laughs> Maybe is, they'll remember. Maybe they'll use this. Guys, I, honestly, if you're listening to this, it's free food. Literally, just fucking sign up for this. So yeah. spinach I mean, I fruit. love free food. So. Yeah. Spinach and fresh mozzarella pizza with olives, mm. bell peppers, and ricotta salada. Sweet and sour salmon with bok choy, carrot, and ginger. Look, go to uh, blueapron.com slash conversations with an S. You will love how good it feels and it tastes. Blueapron.com slash conversations. Wait. Feels? Wait, wait, you will love how good it feels. Yep, that's in there. Wait, how does... Uh, okay, I, I, yeah, I get it. All right. Whatever. They keep talking about like if you cook with your family, apparently like you stay, the family stays together. Okay. You're all happy. I thought that's uh, like, like rubbing ginger and carrots over my nipples as I'm <laughs> cooking. Oh, it feels so good. Rub ginger and carrot over your nipples. That's blueapron.com slash conversations. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Whew, that was a doozy. You just snuck that one right in there on me, Buck. You know why? It takes a lot post. I don't know. I, does, I like the yeah. ones. I like your new one with the DX stuff, but the other things are hard. <clears throat> well, that one, yeah, I was. Uh, Eddie did a good job with that. The uh, I like just switching up the paid advertisements uh, occasionally, and uh, letting Mark for Life make a cameo here and there to keep him alive because he's gone from Snapchat once again. Dude, they, what the fuck? They it's just. Crazy. I, I think they they were like, "Oh, we'll put it up for a couple days and appease this asshole," and then. <laughs> Like, get him off our back and then, like, yanked him again. They probably honestly got more complaints from people. And they're just like, this, this, this character, this face is too controversial. And uh, Mark for Life has once again gone missing. So, which just leaves me, I have, like, I have no desire for Snapchat sometimes. If, if, it's, if I can't do a Mark for Life, it's kind of, like, boring. Nah. Just, like, it, it, I feel like that's a way for me to get across what's going on in an entertaining way outside of just like, Oh, here I am just rock talking about myself in my car or wherever, like everybody else does. So, but what's going on this week? Uh, not a whole lot, kind of a slow week. We're recording this a day early because you got to go over to, to Germany tonight or tomorrow. Excuse me. Yeah. So. 12 hour flight to Germany from Vegas. Kind of odd timing, but, uh, it's not odd timing. It's been in the books forever. Just, the uh, did the stem cell research this week. The, it was surgery. Uh, mm-hmm. They put me under for it, and uh, they had to do a fat graft to get fat cells, and sure. um, and then take my blood. They they drew the blood uh, before they put me out, and uh, then they spin that in the fat cells, and they do what well, they do with what's, it. What's what's the fat cells? They actually like, cut it off from your body. Like yeah, a, like... They, yeah. My they so they did it off the back. The doctor, no joke. I swear to God doctor goes we had trouble finding fat on your body and i go (laughs) like i go i have it in my my sides i go there's enough that right there and he goes yeah but he goes a lot of that's water too i don't like it's weird like i hold water then that spot too um which is really weird but uh they got the fat um and they were they take it spin it and then they go back and they inject um into all the spots where the muscle tears were into the joint um but they notified me which makes a lot of sense. I've told you my shoulder joint has like been moving around for the last two years bad. Mm-hmm. Like if I go to press heavy or not even heavy, just light. And like my shoulder is just, I can't do planks anymore. Cause if I go to do like a plank, my shoulder's just like wobbling around in there. And like, whoa, 
Anyways, my AC joint is separated, which is different than dislocating. It's separated from the collarbone and like the joint, the tendons and ligaments are like overstretched. Um, they told me the stem cell could just repair it, but he goes, okay. it, it wouldn't hurt to put a screw in there and to close that gap and let it, and it's not, it doesn't add any more time. I'm like, I'm going to be out. I didn't realize, I thought I was going to be able to continue doing everything. Um, from what the doctor said before, but he just meant like regular everyday activities, not, not fake fighting and, uh, in weight training at a high level. And, uh, and so lifting I have, the lifting the local big guy up. <laughs> yeah. Lifting the local 400 pound big guy up for fucking shell shocks every week. Uh, but I have to take nothing for eight weeks. So we, uh, that is kind of thrown a wrench in everything. And we've had to kind of deal with that on appearances and everything coming up. I'm hoping it's not that long. But uh, I actually go back in next week to find out about, I got it because they got to do the second portion of it where they put me under, they take bone marrow from my hip and then mm -hmm. with, with the blood and the PRP. And Why is it do, from your hip? Like, what's the reason? Anything? I think that's the easiest place to get bone marrow without okay. like really, I think that's just a very accessible location from everything they've told me and what I read online um, that it, it, it it's a pretty simple process as far as it's not painful. Um, okay. Like I don't wake up where it's like they did like the fat graft from the left side of my fucking Ric Flair love handles. And they <laughs> fucking, they, uh, the Ryback says Flair has love handles. Yeah. 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 No, him and Scott Hall had them. They, they, like, did they, they were always lean and in shape, but they, they, they threw the trunks on. They, they had the, the side fat. Like that, mm -hmm. that's like, that's just the one place I fucking hold it. And uh, if I don't have a good pair of trunks on, it will it will amplify it horribly. Um, I could have a shredded six pack, but I have just a have water and fat just sitting on my sides. But I, I've got it. It's I'm usually super lean, but mm -hmm. uh, they uh, it hurt. It was all swollen, and today it's still swollen. I got like they it, they got bandages over it, but that was like the most sore part. Shoulder was like really stiff, also from everything but I was like oh man my side was like all swollen and but the next treatment's much simpler uh and they take the bone marrow and that's when like the real healing begins is with okay. the bone marrow this kind of the fat cells in the PRP kind of prime everything so that the fat uh, the the bone marrow cells can come in there and just start doing their job right away but I I we're trying to figure out if I got to get this screw put in there or not because I don't want to go eight weeks and then my shoulder like feels good but it's still moving around on me yeah, I, I'm just gonna tear everything all over again because I had tears. I had my my bicep tendon was torn, my rotator cuff was torn, uh, torn, my uh, labrum was torn, and I think the rear shoulder blade had a tear in it. Like, and that's just from that shit moving around all the time. It's from years of abuse and damage and gorilla pressing guys like Kane and fucking mm -hmm. God knows who else. So I'm happy. I'm like, so the the tears weren't big enough to have surgery, kind of like. No, so luckily they they were at a size where uh, stem cell research can heal them. Uh, okay, and then the doctor was able to make that decision. Um, where if they if, so again, if it was like a total tear, then mm -hmm. you're looking at like or a total tendon rupture, you're looking at you got to get that repaired. But okay. I, these are partials, partial tears. So and, and most people have partial tears to some degree. To be especially in your shoulder, a lot mm -hmm. of people have that. And I function with it. I could still do everything with it right now the way it is, but I'm trying to get myself while I'm not on TV. I'm just kind of you know, take eight weeks and get my body right. And I'm 35 years old and I'll like, that's my only issue. So get that yeah. taken care of it. And like, this is the time to do it. You know, when you're on used to on TV, like I could have got it done up there and my, they've dealt with my shoulder. Like we've always worked on it, but like you just go week to week. And you get in that mentality of just survive another week, just survive another week. Mm -hmm. And everybody's banged up and beat up. But I was just like, I, I'm just looking at it like, I need to get this done. Last year, I got the nose and ear. That was mm -hmm. a great decision. I'm so glad I got it done. Now it's like, let's get the shoulder so that I don't need to get a shoulder replacement when I'm 50 years old or, or sure. whatever. It's stem cell research. We have this technology available. I'm going to use it. And it's costing a little bit of money, but it's well worth it. So. Yeah, it's been an interesting week dealing with uh, now knowing this because we're, you still, I mean, eight weeks to heal. You could feel better, I guess, quicker, but you got to be safe with it. And I got to been explaining to promoters little by little, you know, uh, what exactly is going on and making the most of this uh, unfortunate, you know, situation. Some guys still want me to throw the singlet on and just go out there and stand on the apron and uh, 
<laughs> it's not quite that easy, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People probably aren't going to be thrilled with that outcome. Just <laughs> fucking... Or I just do that and just throw super kicks nonstop. Just fucking come in, <laughs> super kick shine, super kick comeback. <laughs> just super kick finish, kick the guy the shit out of the guy's ribs, cover with the foot on him, one, two, three. Oh, man. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> that was suggested today. Like, oh, can he stand on the apron? I'm like, you do realize that the whole crowd will pick up on that, and that's just not, you know. But can just we ex- just... Can we just see him in his singlet? Is that yeah. what he... <laughs> <laughs> Can he do the promo in gear? In gear. We want to see the body. Well, look, he can't work out during this entire thing. Like, he's going to probably lose a little weight and, you know, because he can't work out and he has to mm-hmm. take it easy. You know, I probably don't want to be throwing the singlet on. I was trying to pitch to you the giant Gonzalez muscle shirt for... Uh... For all appearances, if you I want just, to go down that. The singlet is just a whole bodysuit, airbrushed <laughs> muscles. And they were like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> throwing throwing super kicks, meat chin music in my giant Gonzalez body armor. Just <laughs> <laughs> book the big guy at yahoo.com. <laughs> Still the same rate. <laughs> same rate. Bodysuit. Like Fuck. kicks, fucking punches. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. <laughs> You get to see me in my element, just out there fucking just fake fighting. All right. So, yeah, Man. I had my, uh, my little update with, um, so That's I thought I was healed. My, uh, my infection I thought was going away, and I still think it is, but, you know, here's another thing. I just, I, you, you can't trust doctors. Are you going to die on me? Like, I feel probably. like this, geez, this show is going to be really, really boring with just me sitting here drink, me just drinking by myself, <laughs> talking. Rambling on, I should have been WWE champion. (laughs) (laughs) Crying. (sighs) So basically, okay, so, you know, people who reached out and were concerned, um, I had the whole staph infection thing, which is really not a staph infection. It's called Phlegmin. It's the beginning of a staph infection. So um, they put me on, like, you know, I said a month of antibiotics. It was realistically like three weeks. So I'm like 15 days in antibiotics. Uh, I went to the ER to get checked out, and they're like, no, it looks good. Like, just be, if you start getting a fever, if you start getting a lot of pain, a lot of swelling, please go back to uh, come in. And I'm like, no, I'm fine, whatever, everything's fine. So they go, but you have to follow up with your doctor. Now, I don't have a primary care doctor, do you? Like a regular Uh, guy you go to? Well, I got my, I got one doctor, yes. And that that actually, the guy that's doing all this for me is probably going to become my primary doctor after this. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, okay. yeah. He does a lot. This guy is really good. So, so I don't have one. Um, let me take a sip of water. I just moved to this area. And uh, this is honestly, since I got married, like the first time I've ever had really good health insurance. So, so important. I found, oh, God, it's so important. I asked my guys the other day. I was my, my students, people that train with me. Like, I, I think I'm going to start making it mandatory on my shows that guys have to have health insurance. Like, it's, it would only, honestly, you, it would. You're helping people be more responsible by having them. At first, they might bitch and moan and like, I don't have the money, but they will figure out a way to get the money for it eventually if they want to do it bad enough because our health is number one, especially if you're a wrestler out there and you're wrestling and you don't have health insurance. You have no idea like the risk that you're taking. We, you, you know, I remember when we worked at Smoky Bones. Yeah. I, the best part about that job to me was we got health insurance. Yep. And save twenty percent of my Verizon phone bill, which I believe I still might uh, have the old <laughs> the old Darden discount in there. <laughs> that's, um, that's great, le- legit. So you know, it's uh, it, it, you, you just can't overlook it because it, it it's it sucks to you know to pay the monthly bill and not necessarily <clears throat> use it all the time, but that one time that you need it and it could save you a lifetime of trouble. So it's yeah. worth having. All these injuries, I just I looked at that too. I was like, I have to protect these guys from themselves. And if someone gets hurt on the show, granted I have insurance, but still, a lot of times, it's a real shitty situation. So wrestlers um, are people, though, too. And I remember, like, that was one thing WWE actually. I always commend them on this. Is and they started in you know in NXT and they were doing it in developmental in FCW and OVW a little bit. It started where they would bring down like experts in different fields like financing finances and you know and and how you use your money or you know health insurance and they give talks on on the subject and 
they educate you a little bit on things that like kind of life stuff that it's overlooked sometimes. Cause it's like, you know, wrestlers are people too. And, and it's most people don't have their shit together. And yeah. uh, so it, it's just, it's good. They always did a good job and they still do, you know, I think with, with the classes on that and it's not always the most fun stuff, but you won't, that's the only way you learn is by, by having that stuff. And I think you're in a position where you could really, I think the most rewarding part of your job is, is not teaching people how to fake fight. It's you actually can teach them life lessons that can carry, they can carry on for the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, in the wrestling is just a, a bonus with all of it. You teach them how to wrestle really good, but like it, it's, being responsible adults that you could carry over to any other aspect of your life. So thank you. But anyway, back to the infection. Sorry. Uh, So no, no, it's fine. Um, so I, I get this primary care doctor that lives around the block. I go to his office he checks me out, and uh, it's embarrassing because I always have to take my fucking pants off because that's where the the infection. Oh yeah. Is. And um, are, do you are a, you a boxers he, or underwear guy? Uh, I'm a bo- lately a boxer briefs. Occasionally, okay. I do have a pair of briefs. Um, I'm just trying to paint the picture of you pulling your pants down in the doctor's office. I don't, I don't do know boxers. What... I don't think I do boxers anymore. No. What are you? Are you a briefs I'm guy? A, I'm a boxer what... guy. Boxer <laughs> guy. I, I used to be a whitey tidy guy in high school. Then I heard. The football, we were all talking. They were like, yeah, it lowers, that and Mountain Dew lowers your sperm count. So I switched to the boxers. Whether it's true or – I don't know how Mountain Dew got tied into all that, but I just remember Mountain Dew and Whitey Tidies were like a no-no in high school. So I was like, fuck, all right. Switch to boxers and Coke. <laughs> um, Coca-Cola, so, not like the <laughs> – So I stripped down my underwear, and I thought it was weird. He kept, like, rubbing my calves. He's like – you know, make sure. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you sure this guy is to be fucking practicing? That that that's what was weird about it. it was like, hey, the infections in my upper leg, kind of near my my thigh, inner glute area. And he goes like, well, do you have any blood clots in your calves? I'm like, no, my calves are fine. I I have an infection up here. So let me really... feel your glutes. How are those glutes doing? <laughs> so he checked everything. He's like, yeah, and. But he sold it in a different way. Like the ER was like, no, I think you're healing. Like it just takes time. You're going to be on the antibiotics for a long time. He starts freaking out. He's like, he's like, I don't know why you're not with a surgeon already. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, why? Jeez. He's like, he's like, no, like I can feel the abscess. I can feel like there's the infection in there. And, um, and then he kept asking me all these questions on different things. He about diabetes <laughs> sexual orientation <laughs> <laughs> no but he, so he kept asking these questions he's like you sure you don't have any diabetes i'm like no i'm like try, i think i would know this like i'm like i'm i'm a pretty you know i monitor my diet I'm, I'm i'm an athlete like i don't think i have diabetes yeah so he writes down the blood work all these things that i need to get checked he's like we're gonna do your blood so i'm like cool let's do my blood he's like no 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 you have to go to the lab like down the street i'm like fuck this sucks and he's like you also need to go uh get a cat scan again and go see a surgeon i'm like i'm like i already fucking been through this three times this sucks so i'm like all right whatever man like cool he writes me another antibiotic script he's like take these also um i leave and then uh i get my blood work done and i i start typing in google what he's trying to test me for and it's all diabetes stuff yeah and i'm trying to research this and like i told him the exact reason why i got fucked up and it it was almost like he didn't fucking believe me like he was looking like because if you have diabetes you could have an infection that causes a blood clot uh, that then leads to this and like instead of listening to me listening what the er said he came up with his own fucking theory that i have diabetes or i need to get tested for this it's a, it's a it's a 600 dollars i'm like i'm fucking i'm 510 i'm 200 pounds i'm i think i'm in good shape and then uh yeah 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 it's... he so he fucking and the blood work was like 600 bucks my insurance covers it but i'm like is this a fucking scam and then he recommended me to go to his surgeon which is like two blocks away so i'm like is this all a fucking money grab and yeah. then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to the most surgeon. medical stuff really is to be i, yeah. I mean it's really Life, I told you, revolves around businesses and making money. And there's people that do it the right way, and there's people that do it the wrong way. And it exists in every field in this world. Crazy, so, Yeah. That's why being self-aware is the, the greatest gift you could be your, give yourself and just educating yourself. And I've read different books on the medical, on medical practices. And, and 
and whatnot. And it's like, you know, there's, there's some great mechanics out there and there's some really shady mechanics and there's some great doctors and there's some really bad ones. So, um, you never know. That's why. So, so what happened with all this? So I still have the, the mass feels, it was freaking me out because my quad was killing me because I'm still working out. I'm still doing a lot of shit. Same thing. I'm still wrestling like an idiot at school. And then, uh, but I woke up one day and my, my, Quad, my inner thigh was hurting, and uh, but I think it was from I think it was from working out. So basically, I think I'm fine. I haven't gone back to the surgeon yet. I'll finish the antibiotics. Um, the infection feels like it's going down. I'm not in pain. So, but this thing's been a motherfucker, man. Like, I I've never had something like this before. But hey, I think uh, I keep psyching myself out and googling. You know, the worst thing is the internet for sicknesses. Like, oh, like, it's uh, the worst. You you will get every. It, you shouldn't look at it because what you, you there's this, there's a, you just read what certain people like it, it attracts a very negative per, type of person that, that likes to like they'll talk about the worst aspects and, and you, you might not be getting all the facts and you'll be yeah. like, oh my God, I'm going to lose my leg and like that's what I keep doing yep yeah yeah it's you, you can't read I remember I've had things and I was just like, holy shit, I can never look online for anything because it's it's not you're not getting actual facts it's mm-hmm. it just you got to think of who's what kind of person is going to go and type something online? Like, <laughs> like, eh, like it, you got to kind of take that into account a little bit. And then there's different things, obviously, where there's good and bad. But that, those sorts of things, I've, I've noticed that with, with medical things. I'm like, well, I can't really use online things for diagnosing myself sometimes. Because mm-hmm. um, it's not always the most accurate. So, But you're outside here, of, you're alive. That's good. I'm here, I'm fine. Outside of that, everything's been good. I had to go wrestle for Dreamers this weekend, and um, who are you and working what, on that? I don't know. Dreamer likes to keep it top secret, like he, <laughs> why? Because he because he probably doesn't know yet. Oh, that <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. So we do not like, want to announce the card. Every time I've been booked there, it's always been like a decent match, or he likes to have one three way dance on the show, like ECW style, with like three athletic guys. So. Sometimes I've been in those. So those yeah, are always I, last fun. one we did, I remember that one, or no, the second to last, my fir- my first appearance for him, mm-hmm. where I shell shocked Hornswoggle's little ass. Uh, he, uh, you did, I think you did the triple threat or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and you the, didn't the, watch the, it. The, the athletic, <laughs> yeah, the athletic triple threat that I missed the entire thing because I was talking to Santino, and just completely, just you come to the back and I felt like, God damn, I missed. <laughs> like you guys put in some time where it wasn't like a five minute match. Like I. I had time, and I, but I didn't. We just got to talking, and Santino can—he's a real chatty Kathy. He can, he can keep, he can keep you grounded in one place for a while. Sure, and, and, but it's entertaining though. You don't want to leave either. No, he's great. It's a personal victory for me too, because like that was the first time. That was the ECW arena, so like that's like, oh yeah, that's Mark. That's that's Mark for life. Central. That's like the fucking <laughs> diehard. Like that's the hardest building. The most, you know. um, a difficult smart mark building in the world. So I was like, ah, oh, I actually fucking did well here. Like, cause they eat people up, man. You do one thing. You're, you're fucking really? crucified. Oh yeah. Were you, you weren't an ECW guy, were you? Uh, no, I never was exposed to it until much later. I didn't even know it existed until, you know, I, I've watched, I go back and watch matches occasionally now, but I was mm-hmm. never, I just remember when I was a kid, I would occasionally see their promo late at night on TV they, yeah. they would do like the infomercial spot of just, and I, but I never was, uh, I never, it never caught my attention. Like, whereas I was always a WWF guy when I was a kid. And I finally, I remember I came home from a baseball game and I was waiting for Raw to come on. I think Raw started at nine and yeah. I'm going through the channels and wrestling was on at eight something. And okay. it was Mark Merrow in the ring. And I, it was somebody else, and I recognized the other guy. Mm-hmm. And I was, I go, whoa, that guy was in WWF before. I wondered what happened to him. And, like, I just started watching. And then I, from that point on, I remember <clears throat> I would go to my baseball games. My, mm-hmm. I always had baseball usually on Monday nights. And I would, um, I would usually, in the game, I would always get back in time to watch. But I would record one and watch the other, and then go back and watch the VHS of the other. And, like, okay. whatever I wanted to see. And whatnot, but that's how I discovered that. But like it, something about it caught my attention. Whereas like ECW, I didn't. It, it never triggered something into me to to like look into it further. 
because it really? wasn't it, it wasn't an actual show on TV. It was an infomercial, and I don't think the internet was as prevalent back then. That, and like, that was the the infomercial was the show actually. Yeah, but I just never, I never, it never just, it was never enough for whatever reason. As a kid, I didn't just stop everything I was doing and like, it didn't, not to say I didn't like it. It just didn't, it didn't, didn't click. Yeah. It didn't click with me. So, sure. and it, you know, and I paid for it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny you say that because the infomercial thing with ECW, that, that's what, that really is what did it for me. When I first time I saw it, I actually thought it was like, I was so confused. It was Spike Dudley versus, uh, Chris Candido and I'm like it's one of the body Donnas versus like a guy that looks like a farmer in tie dye you know jeans and a and a and a and a t-shirt I'm like what the fuck is this and then uh but quickly that changed because I mean it's a New York thing and I was even a fanboy sneaking to the ECW uh not the not that not the arena the Elks Lodge and I would sneak at 12 years old and do ring crew I would get there early in the morning yeah I was I was such a I was all that's what made me try to pursue this too but it's funny years later I don't know if this has ever been public knowledge, <clears throat> but you've mentioned the word infomercial, which is actually a, um, I didn't really figure out why they had it as an infomercial. And I think I know why, because I did it myself. Okay. So Heyman obviously ran ECW. He's the one that got it as an infomercial. Um, there was a time when I had a former company now that I have wrestled pro, but before that I had pro wrestling syndicate. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, uh, Sorry. you said it, not me. No, but it's fine. But we had, <clears throat> We wanted to put our stuff on TV or, or just figure it out. How do we do that? So we realized we couldn't fucking afford it. We're just an independent company. But then we found a loophole where you, uh, if you put content on TV, it's four yeah. times the expense compared to an infomercial. So you could put an infomercial on TV for one-fifth of the price uh, based on content. And that's what we did for, for like six months. We were going to do it for a year, but it just was not... Nobody, nobody was watching it. <laughs> I'm just it picturing really... shitty me with shitty paid advertisements over and over. The NWO feed me more nutrition. The DX feed me more nutrition. <laughs> Everything over and over for 30 minutes. Just big guy. Just some I... kid late at night. Like, oh, there. That's what he's doing now. Cool. They, they literally wrote me last week, and it's on a major network. It's not on like it's one of those things. It's on the morning. You know, it costs a certain amount between a half an hour and an hour. What but is the, the cost? Do you know? Like, what is yeah. Like a... So I was. Are told, we allowed to talk about that? No, we're allowed to talk about it. Uh, well, <laughs> there was the amount of money that I thought I was paying. That's a different story. Okay, let's just yeah. say uh, you know the real amount, like what it would really like. Cost. If I wanted to run a thirty-minute infomercial at night for, yeah. you know, are you hungry? And then yes, <laughs> for, me and Mark for life, just fucking running thirty-minute infomercials. I think for thirty minutes. Probably in the in the seven hundred dollar range for like you know like a three in the morning four in the morning per episode, uh, yeah like per like oh, weekly that's thing. Oh, not bad at all. It's not that bad. Like I think oh. an hour was like something like nine or or a, a, or like a thousand bucks for an hour. And this is on like Channel Five in New York, but it's a shitty time. Sl- it all depends on your time slot. The yeah. more, but people you know, are awake. There's a lot of people lying in bed that can't sleep at that night. That when I'm pitching my sleep formula to them, that, that they they buy it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. People come back drunk from the bars. They buy fucking. Oh, the there's Ryback. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this stuff. Just the most random infomercial ever. So basically, after that, like uh, the infomercial thing, um, and so we got, but we had to follow parameters, and this is what Heyman did, which is he's fucking genius for, and he's probably he's never put this out there because I think he doesn't want people to know this, the scam that uh. You had to follow like different things. You had to have music for like a certain like two minutes. Then you need like a four camera shot or something for seven minutes. So we broke it down and, and did the basically a wrestling infomercial. <clears throat> and and it, was, it was cool to have it, but we weren't ready for it. And it was a really like to run TV stuff, man, the type of cameras. The, it's a the, lot of work. Are, not just a lot of work. I think the what people expect from seeing, you know, WWE, like it's it's tough. People look at that and they they. They, they compare it out. to that instantly. Like that's the the measuring stick essentially for for yeah. everything else wrestling related. Yeah. So it just it wasn't worth the investment. So uh, I pulled the plug on that. But yeah, if you want to start doing infomercials, man, I know all about that bullshit. So. Not wrestling at all. It's just so fucking random. Everything. Me breaking <laughs> stuff. Are you hungry? <laughs> then me like smashing a table full of food, and then like promoting the book. Like wake up, it's feeding time. 
people are like, what the hell am I watching? But like, dude, there's Ryback. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's my stoner voice at three in the morning, just like watching TV, eating Doritos. <laughs> dude, feed me more. Cool. So what else we got going on this week as oh. far as the, the wrestling world or what, what else? What do you got? I have to talk about the Amazon situation because I don't think we talked about this last week or not uh, in detail. So everyone out there, the Feed Me More Nutrition is available on Amazon, but it, the listings have been temporarily taken down. I think we're going on a week now. Being uh, They've been gone, I think, over a week now. Um, they So they never should have been put up. Amazon overlooked something. They were supposed to request an approval. Um, I w- there was one other form for the sports nutrition. Um, mm-hmm. And now they are charging people that sell supplements on Amazon um, $3,000. It's a fee you have to pay. It, whether you agree with it or not, they're Amazon. And that's their rules now. It didn't exist before, but it exists now. So okay. they pulled the listings off of Amazon. And the guy that is helping me... Um, with all the Amazon stuff, had to like submit more paperwork and all this other certificates and stuff. And it's like they've just taken their time with it. Yeah. And he even like reached out to the chat support and like, you know, like guys, like this is like, you know, costing us a week worth of sales essentially. You know, can you please approve it so we could pay the $3,000 and get the listings back up? And then we just got approved for global, which is for the Canada, the UK, Mexico, Japan. Okay. And, it, but I can't do anything until we get the United States thing straightened out. So in the meantime, everything is available at feedmemore.com and I'll pump you up.com. But uh, just go through feedmemore.com right now, guys, if they're not back up by the time that this comes out. And it's just been, it's been a headache, but there's nothing I can do about it. And hmm. it, it, it's essentially, though, they, they're, they're, such, they're the largest retailer in the world. And they, 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 they allow me to do great business that I would not be able to do right away on my own. So it's well worth getting it straightened out and, and whatnot. It's just been a little bit of a hassle. I've had a lot of people messaging me and, uh, they're like, well, where'd they go and, and whatnot. But I know the shaker bottles, the wristbands, the pendants, that stuff's up there. Um, but we got more stuff. I got the feed me more nutrition water bottles coming. Uh, those just went to production and the feed me more nutrition tank tops and, uh, all that stuff's finally on its way. Um, but the Amazon thing, it's just been a headache. It just dealing with all that. Well, how whatnot. big are the water bottles? 2.2 liters. So I think we're good because you're against the gallons, right? Yes. No, That's I'm all thing. for. The I'm all two, for. 2.2 liters is like the, I feel like the acceptable size. Yes. Um, and we got the yellow bottles with the blue Ryback and uh, the Feed Me More Nutrition logo. And so just slowly adding to the line, uh, the Shell Shock Fat Burner is they're getting me the samples finally on that. And um, just to get everything approved with all that, and that goes into production, and that'll be done in a couple of weeks once it goes into production. So it's uh, it's exciting, man, with everything with the line. I can't thank everybody enough for the support, and um, they truly are. It, this is not a gimmick. They are the real deal. They are legit. They are good for you, and uh, they will help you achieve your fitness goals. So that's just going on with Amazon. Wanted to touch on that, let everybody know, because I've got a lot of emails on that. So Great. Now let's talk some fake fighting because that's what people want to hear. Before we get into that, though, I mean, oh. let me ask you a question, Buck. What do you? What kind of razor do you use to shave with? Ah, uh, well, it 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 changes. You know, I, I really wish there was a service that just, I don't know, maybe delivered it once a month. You ever hear of such a thing? I mean, I'm the type of guy that's always gone to the store and you buy those cartridges that are thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, for an 18 pack, I think they come in 18 and, uh, but they're a lot of money and they, and they tend to wear out pretty fast. And, you know, I'm, I'm bald by choice. I don't know if you know that or not. I, I shave my head every day, um, to keep this beautiful thick hair from, from coming in to keep it at bay. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but I go through razors quite quickly. I, the big guy am quite a fan of the dollar shave club. Are you familiar with them? Why don't you tell me about that? I've never heard about them in my entire life. Special note, please include what you like best about your personal experience with the Dollar Shave Club razor. In Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, feel free to make the talking points and and content as creative as you would like. This is very worn out, by the way. Speak to how you made the smarter choice by choosing switching to dollarshaveclub.com. Well, Buck, I just got fucking sick 
of just going to the store every time and buying these razors. And, and it was one of these, I was like, stupid. You know, Dollar Shave Club is the simple answer to all my problems and all my shaving needs. And why Dollar Shave Club is awesome is Dollar Shave Club is the smarter choice, Pat. Get a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your door. It's an awesome life hack and no-brainer choice. You no longer have to schlep to the store to buy a cheap fucking disposable razor that gave you a cheap shave, cheap little slutty shave, or spend a fortune on razors with a gimmicky shaving tech you didn't need. You know this is very worn out, by the way. This printed, my, my, my printer is out of ink, almost. <laughs> so I'm like reading this, it's all like very light and like, so, uh, and when I use my Dollar Shave Club executive razor, because I'm the big guy, and their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter, which sounds really good right now, the blade just gently glides against my smooth, my smooth shave. Their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter is transparent for a more precise shave, helps prevent ingrown hairs, and fights razor bumps. You, too, can make the smarter choice by joining Dollar Shave Club. Call to action. For a limited time, <laughs> new, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter for only $5, guys, with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. After that, razors are just a few bucks a month. This is a really long Holy advertisement. Fuck, this is long. This is yeah. what I was telling you. Like This is like three minutes long. In your first month box, you get an awesome weightly handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, and a tube of their shave butter. I wonder if you can use it while jerking off. <laughs> after, after your first month, replacement cartridges stop auto, ship automatically at their regular price. There are no hidden fees and no commitments. Cancel anytime you like. Join the club today at dollarshaveclub.com slash conversations. Let's do that again. Dollarshaveclub.com slash conversations. That's dollarshaveclub.com <laughs> slash conversations. Nobody's it, listening anymore. It, it, it just, Jesus. That is the longest. Oh, yeah. Dollar Shave Club. I, I'm honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to switch to it. Oh, man. <laughs> that reminded me of the scene in Rocky Balboa when he's reading the cue cards and he's just reading every single part. I knew Ryback right couldn't cut a promo. He reads everything off a teleprompter. Uh, I, I legit, my printer's out of ink and it's, I could not have printed out. I, cause we did this right before the show. You go, do you want to do the dollar shave club? I go, yeah, I print it out real quick. I ran and grabbed it and threw it on the table. And then I'm like <laughs> trying to read it as I, and I'm like, is my vision totally gone? Or am I like, did this? And then I just realized that, that the ink thing came on earlier saying your cartridges are almost out of ink. Mm. Oh. Dollar shave club is really good though. Once a month you get the razors and. It saves you a trip to the store because they really are fucking over overpriced bullshit. So oh, that, get... that, that's no joke. The, the cartridges are expensive, man. And uh, the store, you know what? Quick story here. I don't think we addressed this on the podcast. Uh, one of your bookings, I think, two weeks ago. Um, I fucked up because I forgot that it was <clears throat> normally you. If you have a, you do a lot of shows. Rarely do you do conventions too. But like normally, I'm aware of it, and I forgot that you did a show one night, and the next day was a. Uh, a convention, then a show. Yeah. So you're like working out at the gym. You're like, the show's at like seven, right? I'm like, oh, fuck. Uh, I think the show's like in an hour from now or like yeah, or the, like, the convention was. I, I Or like you're supposed to be there now. And I was like, oh, I'm doing cardio right now. And I rushed to my hotel. And uh, but my favorite thing you said, though, is you said, I got to go shave my head. Like no matter yeah. what. Yeah, no, like I can't show up with. I that, I always feel like I got to give them the the rye back from TV shaved head. I can't have a day or two days worth of hair coming in. Like I just can't. I, plus, really? I will say this goes back, and the reason for this is it. Skip Sheffield always had hair, a shaved head, but Skip Sheffield, I oh, I didn't shave my head bald with Skip Sheffield because I always wanted to keep Skip Sheffield friendly. So I had, Holy I looked, shit. I looked friendlier when I let my hair grow in a little yeah. bit. It just, it just made me look friendlier than when I shaved my head bald. So anytime my hair starts growing back, I instantly get flashbacks of yep, yep, yep. What it do. And like, <laughs> it's a nightmare. Like, cause that, it was, it was, that was such a character and it was, I had a great time doing it, but it was so far from the truth as far as how I am. And I, uh. So that's why I, I never want in like in wrestling fans. I feel like 
if I like, man, he looked more like Skip than Ryback today. Like I just oh don't. Oh my god! I, so I always have to shave my head. I can't. I, it's just that. That's the psychology behind it. Everybody has their things, man. I I I understand. What about that? In my ass ass hair, ass hair. You got to keep the ass <laughs> shaved. You never want ass hair coming out of your trunks or your sink. I got to shave my ass real quick before I yeah. go to the side. You got to shave know, my ass before I go fake fight. Speaking of shaving the ass, Trent Beretta is uh, gave me the best tip ever. Um, I use Nair for that region, and actually, you oh, can really? use you can use Nair to go pretty deep. You can go in between the crack and all the way oh, down. Wow. It won't burn you. And, uh, I didn't know that. So shout out to Trent for teaching me how to how to how to nair my asshole. So uh, I I'm good about once every four to six weeks. You know, I shave the body once a week, like the legs and mm-hmm. everything. Usually, I do it the day before an appearance. I I just shave the shave the old calves and the big guy quads. And and you're a razor guy or a buzzer? I'm a razor. Guy? I'm the I'm the the I believe I use the Gillette the triple uh, blade. And uh, uh, I heard I, you use Dollar Shave Club now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do now, <laughs> asshole. I, but before, I'm saying this is all past tense. Now okay, I'm, a, okay. I'm, I'm a Dollar Shave Club guy now. And I got to go make sure I sign up with our thing. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, I, I hope Dollar Shave Club is good on the ass. The, uh, <laughs> be, because I, about every four to six weeks, I got to shave the ass. I just feel like there's nothing. If you shave your body, I feel like you just can't walk around with a hairy ass. No. I don't know. That's just my... It just feels weird. Like, I feel like I, like, it reminds, that brings me back to Gorilla Man when I wore the fur trunks. Just a shape, a hairless body and just a furry crotch and ass region with uh, the Gorilla Man trunks. So I do remember you were letting your arm hair grow out, Smoky Bones. Oh, I let my whole body hair grow. That was my low point of life. (laughs) I'll never, and I was, I'll never forget Jimmy, Jimbo Slice, the manager. There's one picture with me and I look like a werewolf. I never realized my body, I let it grow out for months. And like, it was great not having to shave anymore. But I remember it like it covered up all my vascularity and definition. And like, it just looked, I had a full head of hair and I'm in my Smoky Bones uniform. There's a picture of me and Morgan, who was an attractive uh, girl that worked there at the time. And, but I look like a werewolf. And Jimmy even go, he goes, you look like a werewolf. And I think I went that night and I was like, yeah, I do. I look, this is pathetic. And I went, <laughs> I shaved. It took me like an hour to shave all the body hair. It was so long. Fuck. And like, never again. I've got, I've actually got laser treatment done um, a couple no. of years ago. I've had four sessions done and it slowed it down to where I don't have to shave quite as often. I, I think I was supposed to do seven or eight treatments. Mm-hmm. And uh, I take it back. I did three. I was supposed to do six or seven treatments for it to permanently stop my hair growth. But I did my arms, my underarms, and my chest. And uh, it has helped. But, um, and I did my calves also. Um, Damn. It's, I want to get it. I got to go back. It's a, I think it's usually like a few hundred bucks, a mm-hmm. treatment, three or four hundred bucks. Um, but I, I hate shape. Like, I just think it's so worth it. Because, like, we, I was just talking. I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast the other day. And uh, I don't know why. They said something on it that triggered. I was just thinking of like body hair and how like we don't need body hair anymore. Yeah. We're like, we're not cavemen. We're not like, we don't need it to keep warm. And, and no. like, it, it, we're, we're kind of past that. So I, I just think it, I look better without body hair. I'm just used to it. So I was like, what better way to save time than not having to shave than just get this shit all, and not like facial hair in my head. I'll always shave that because I'm sure at some point I'm going to be 50 years old and have a full head of hair again eventually. And, I'll get stem cells done on my head and have my, my hair, my widow's peak will grow perfectly. And, you know, I'll look younger at 60 than I did at 35. So <laughs> I, mean, I want to get that done. I want to get the stem cells to the head, but you don't get, do you get back hair? No, I've never been a, I, I'll randomly maybe every once in a blue moon, get like a shoulder hair, <sighs> like one of those long, long black ones on my shoulder. But I, I've never been a, I think it's all blonde. If it is, I've never, yeah. and Dude, I, I've never had it shaved. I never will. Like it's, I'm glad. It's one thing I'm really glad about. I have to shave my back twice a week. Um, so does I couldn't. I don't. How the fuck do you do it? I wouldn't. Even, <clears throat> that's the problem. See, my I lats are so. My lats are so goddamn big. <sighs> Ryder uh, has this problem too. We've we've talked about this a lot. Like it sucks. So basically, I'll. Uh, I have a tool called a razor butt, 
And, uh, you know, because I could always, a lot of guys have back hair. They don't give a shit. They'll have their buddy, like, shave or their wife shave their back. I don't want to bother her. So I have a tool called a razor butt. What a razor butt is, basically, it's a long blue handle, and you put the disposable razor into the handle, and I can reach over, and it does just shave A that. Dollar Shave Club razor fit in that. Dollar Shave Club? No, it doesn't, which is a shame, which may, maybe the Maybe they could come out with a back shaver Dollar Shave Club. That would, that would maybe, be incredible. A device, the, the back shave device that they're well, only their Dollar Shave Club unit to plug into. There used to be one called the Man Groomer that was an electrical back shaver. It, like, I remember you up. back in the day. You used oh, to have that. I probably had it, yeah. At Governor's Way, yeah. And that, that thing was a piece of shit. I used it like twice <laughs> and like it just it didn't work. But the Razor Buh, um, I, if you have back hair... You know, it's pretty disgusting. You got to take care of that shit. So, like, if you can, re- whatever bo- places you can reach, you put the nair on. But if not, put that, get that razor, but it's like 20 or 30 bucks, blue handle. And uh, it does wonders because, you know, who wants a fucking hairy back? It's yeah. the worst thing in the world. What about pubic hair? Are you a big shaving the pubic hair? Or do you go, you just go fire crotch for life? <laughs> I, dude, I was bullied as a kid with that, that, uh, the, the old. What Gin- for having a fire or... cr- for having a fire crutch? Oh sure, man. If you if you're a redhead and you grow up, kids just, really uh, fire crotch, uh, cherry crotch. Uh, Holy gin- shit! Ginger pubes. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, uh, that I was the first one I think in my high school that just like shaved his whole body, and people thought that was on my team. Like all the sports teams, like oh, it's weird as fuck. And by senior year, everybody was shaving their body. So you started a trend for your school. You way way ahead of the times. Trend fuck yeah, completely did. We have a lot of body hair talk on this episode. It's 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 just it's a big. I think little things that like just pop up that all wrestlers deal with that like is never. Yeah, you know this I is like shave. wrestler Cesaro doesn't have to ever worry about that. He let, just goes old school and just lets his body hair grow out, but. Why does he have like back hair too and everything? No, he I don't know if he has back, but he has like the he's 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 heavily haired. He's he's got a, a full body hair deal going on. Like he doesn't shave anymore. I think he, he might have for a little bit, but he's got that old school uh, look going. Some guys can pull it off too, like the chest hair. Sometimes, like Joey, that's that's Joey Ryan's gimmick. But, it's very uh, fitting for him, actually. Like it it's works. Great. <laughs> yeah, the mustache. Uh, like that's another guy. Like a mustache works on him. Whereas other people grow a mustache and like it just like he makes it work. So. Yeah. So with body hair, why don't we go ahead and we'll take a little break right here and we'll come right back with no body hair talk. No body hair. All right. Hey guys, I discovered something really big. The best new way to buy business travel. It's called Upside.com. And I'm telling you, if you're not a business traveler and you know someone who is, you have to tell them about Upside. Here's why I love it. Every time you buy a trip at Upside, you save a ton of money and they give you an Amazon gift card worth $100, $200, even $300 every time. The way they do it is really clever. They bundle your flights and your hotel together for one low price. Bundled pricing saves money, especially on business travel, so Upside gives you free Amazon gift cards for it. If you're a frequent business traveler, your company saves a ton of money, and you get thousands a year for buying your air and hotel together at Upside. Plus, you still get all your miles. You'd be crazy not to check out Upside.com. If you're shopping for business travel, it takes three minutes to see how much you can save by buying flights and hotel for one low price. I can't believe it's taken someone so long to do this. And check out what I've arranged to you. Use BizTrip, code Biz, B-I-Z-T-R-I-P, and you're guaranteed to get at least $200 Amazon gift card for your first trip. BizTrip gets you at least a $200 Amazon gift card for free. How can you not do it? It's a no-brainer. Save big on travel and get a big gift card every trip. I love Upside.com. Upside.com. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Enjoy the show. And we're back. All right. We're, <laughs> what are, I always think that it's going to be... Uh, okay. Because you always see, like, I'll bring us back, but I always think it's going to be like this long-winded thing. You're like, we're back. <laughs> no. It's, I, I, oh, I, I just mean that I'm going to say, and we're back. And then I just wait for you to and go, okay. But, uh, yeah, no. It's, I like it when it, the awkward moments like that happen. So my favorite, one of my favorite things to do on this show, we, we love the iTunes review. We're narcissists. We love the attention. Uh, we appreciate these positive reviews. And uh, 
Let's see uh, what the old review of the week is. There's two of them. Ah, one of my favorite and, little deals on the show is you never know what we're going to get in these old review segments. And a side comment, there was someone that wrote to the old email about how a uh, pretty motivating thing. He lost 85 pounds, and he does credit this podcast. I couldn't get the name. I apologize, sir. But that was pretty mind-blowing. He sent him pictures and everything. and That's incredible. Uh, that was pretty cool. That yeah. is, uh, no, thank you very much. And that's uh, one of the fan questions tonight. It kind of deals with that. Um, we'll, I will address something in that and in in how that gives brings a lot of sac- satisfaction to myself that we're able to help people through us just sitting here having conversation and sharing a little bit of what we know, what has helped us. And um, very cool, man. Keep going and uh, feed me more. I love it. He credited that to the supplements as well as the little healthy eating tips that he picked up on the show when he had a gym membership. So I thought that was pretty fucking cool. Good deal. That, that's what it's all about. So this week we have Runes, R-U-N-Z, or Runs, excuse me, Bronson, and it says, with a broken ankle. So I was listening to last week's episode of Conversation with the Big Guy when Buck was telling a story about the emergency room and how it makes you appreciate life And having never been to the ER, I begin to wonder how true that really was. Well, wonder no more, because less than five seconds later, I tripped down the stairs, I broke my ankle in three places, and required required surgery. I I don't know, I I didn't think I read this, I didn't read this review, did I? While waiting in the ER, I couldn't help but laugh, because everything around me was absolutely miserable. Buck could have been more accurate. Being in the ER is much like listening to, uh, being in the ER, much like listening to this podcast, makes you realize that life is short, and there are better things to be doing with your time. Thanks, big guy and Buck for the laughs, insight to the wrestling business, and causing me to break my ankle. Keep up the excellent work. Oh, that's... <laughs> thank you very much, but that sucks, as I know from... I broke my ankle in three places before, so... Uh, that is uh, that is not fun. And I actually, I, too, touching on the emergency rooms, when I had to go do my stem cell procedure, it was at the surg- sur- um, their surgery center and. Mm-hmm. They kept me, we got there, I was supposed to be there at 10.30, we got there at 10.20 and uh, to do the paperwork early, and I sat, and then we got done with the paperwork at 10.45, they brought me, say they brought me back at 11, mm-hmm. I was back there till almost 1 o'clock with an IV in my hand, all in my little gown, waiting to go back, and uh, just like they were pumping me full of fluids, and I remember, like, I, you don't eat or drink. So I hadn't eaten. It had been, like, 13 or 14 hours at this point. Jesus. I'm just cranky sitting there. Finally, I realized I had my phone in the locker. I was like, can you please get my phone? And, like, I did one Snapchat of me with my fucking new shoes, just wearing my feet in my little gown. And, like, I, I was just so <laughs> miserable. I didn't even want to turn it around and talk. I was just, like, I wanted to get this done so bad. And, and then it was great once they gave me the, the med. The best part of surgery is right before you go out. When they, okay. when they inject you with the sleeping uh, to put you under, you get like a brief moment of like the most relaxing, euphoric feeling ever. And then you wake up in pain. <laughs> but like you <laughs> right before, and sometimes I've had for like the more complicated surgeries, the guy, I remember when I got my groin, when I had the two core muscle tears, the two uh, groin tears, they... Uh, the guy, I go look because they go. They woke me up and rehab started right away from that. Right away, literally woke me up and I had to go right to the rehab center to start because your 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 groin muscles tighten up really quick from the surgery. Wow. It, okay. But so I knew that like there was no vacation for this eleven or ten week cert process that I was going to have before I went back to TV, and I uh, I told the guy, I go look, this right here is my best fucking moment I've had it. Like I go years of just strenuous work and nonstop travel. I just want to feel good, man. And the guy goes, mm-hmm. he gave me the highest dose he could give me legally um, <laughs> and not get in trouble uh, to drug me up. And I go, but I go, I go, give it to me slowly. I want to feel it. <laughs> 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 and uh, the guy did. He, I, and that's what I cut that promo, the fucking big in the big in the bed talking about Babe Ruth. And I had the fucking, I passed. Yeah. I legit passed out at the end of it. The person who filmed it, I, I swear to God, I planned on going down like that anyways at the end, but I swear to God, I fell asleep right when I did that. I was out. It was a one shot, one deal and done. So uh, Can you find that thing? Is it's it on it YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube, but I'll, I'll, I'll repost it under on Instagram or something. Well, Eddie can put it in right now. 
Pretty. Yeah, that promo. Eddie, Eddie, if you could put that promo in right here, please. Uh, that would make my day. <laughs> Hello. I'm WWE Superstar Ryback. The human wrecking ball, the former four-time WWE champion. The big guy himself. <laughs> Everybody loves the big guy. You may be asking yourself, why am I dressed up in this, this cool outfit? Well, I've been injured for some time. Been wrestling for about seven months. With a couple strained growings and two sports hernias. But you know, that's what we do. Call me selfish, call me crazy. Call me an egotistical maniac. I do it for you guys, goddammit. The WWE Universe. The kids, the grandparents, the fathers, the mothers. Especially, especially for the mothers. <laughs> oh, the mothers love the big guy. What can I say? I'm going off on a tangent. I got to get fixed. Got to get some stuff right. Because I'm coming back. My good friend, Babe Ruth. You might know him as the Bambino. <laughs> he goes, big guy. Never let the fear of striking out get in your way. And I can assure you, babe... <laughs> the big guy's coming back in a big way. And when I do, things are going to go my way. And everybody's going to know. Everyone. Right back. The big guy drugged up, and it, people loved it. That that was actually I came back as good guy Ryback after that. So, wow. My bet. My best thing was there was a caption on it. Somebody put, uh, "Drugged up and half asleep." Uh, the big guy still cuts a better promo than the Bella Twins. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but it, I was it was so fucking random. It was like, what do they have to do with anything? Like, I, I, I like the Bella Twins, but like it had nothing to do with like. Whatever, That's but funny. It, that, I never the caption made me. I'm like all drugged up in that that post. It was good. So so this but, uh, great review, great review. Second review, bad results. <laughs> Pat's health issue from Steve J. Call. Well, with friends like Kevin Matthews, I get the feeling that people are going to s- start intentionally coughing and sneezing around Pat just to screw with him. This coming Saturday is my birthday, and hopefully, I'll get a shout out on the podcast. By the way, when will we see Ryback versus Kevin Matthews at Wrestle Pro? That's I know who Steve J. Call is. He comes to every Wrestle Pro show. He's okay. probably the most loyal fan that there is. But uh yeah, so that's that's who that is right there. Well, when uh go ahead and donate to Pat's GoFundMe for the big guy account <laughs> to, to bring me in and uh we can get that worked out. I get that question a lot. They're like, like what, how come Ryback's on this one? I'm like, I've brought Ryback in five to six times over the course of like seven months. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And I never know about it. You always just tell me. I'm like, okay, I'll come. July, July, and I think uh, I think uh, October, you'll be. Uh... I got to be. Out. Hopefully, I'm wrestling by July. Oh, I think I should be right. Yeah. Oh, you better be. Put that April, fucking May. suit on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> throwing su- sweet white uh, meat chin music in my uh, in my nice suit. I'm really excited. Slip- That's a Go huge ahead, festival show. They actually they came to Starland Ballroom, and uh, he was a huge fan of you and Cody. Uh, so he's like, can you, can you do a show? And it was on a Thursday. I'm like, yeah, it's actually making me think of running shows on different days because if I run on a Thursday night, everybody's available. Like nobody has bookings. Yeah. So like, I'm like, yeah, of course they're both available. So you and Cody and Swoggle will be on a, uh, on this, like it's a big, supposedly they get 10,000 people at this, uh, it's a freedom state festival. Um, but you were oh wow yeah you were requested that will, that will do well with all the kids there that would uh, that would people would flock to the ring for that so I might bring in uh, Jeff gonna... Cobb for that one too thinking about that oh yeah? yeah that'd be cool man I told you I've been watching and we'll get back to the reviews here uh, I was watching a lot of Keith Lee matches this week he's great and I Keith Lee is built how old is he do you know I don't know I don't know but he's I don't know if he's he's either super young or he's older I can't tell mm-hmm. like. 
but like he's he's really really agile and he's really good. He uh, but he like has I told you I go he has the physique I would want if I like I care about like being lean all the time and everything. Yeah, but like he's like in good shape. He has abs still actually I've noticed for being he his body fat is higher though, but he's. He's super muscular mm-hmm. still, though. He's a big... He, he is a big guy. And, like, if I... I feel like that is the perfect physique for wrestling in this day and age to be big still without... And I don't know if he uses steroids or anything. It, it like Because I feel that that physique could be achieved without... Like, but it takes... You have to eat a lot of good food still, but you have to have a lot of calories and work out really hard. And, like, he's really muscular, but he has a little bit of body fat, too. But it, it's, like, he's happy. He's comfortable. I feel I was like, man, and like you have a little padding too for like the bumps. Yep. You're not just super shred. Like I was like, man, he has it all figured out. He's fucking, he's a big guy. He doesn't, he's still lean. He doesn't have to be like, it just works. And I, I was like, but he's really good. And I, I, I was impressed by him. So he's another guy on my list. I think now I, I, I actually do want to use him too. He's one of the guys <laughs> I want to bring in that, uh, very impressed with. I think he's very talented, but uh, <laughs> really impressed with his, Big guy physique. <laughs> just love him. <laughs> just look at him. God damn it. The muscle, just the thickness. Oh, he can throw the guys around. What what were we talking about? Fuck. I can't remember. The reviews. The reviews. Okay. I'm I'm going. I have a soft spot for broken ankles. Not that I'm gonna pick any more broken ankle ones for a few. Um, but that guy I have sympathy to people because I have experienced that myself. So uh what is his name? His name is uh Runs. R U N Z Bronson. So if you can prove your identity and if you want and send it to uh the big guy at feedmemore.com an email um with a screenshot of your uh name please, your iTunes account with the review and a supplement of your choice, feed me more nutrition, and a free feed me more nutrition shaker bottle. Um or some people I and I we've gotten this where people are not um they don't take supplements or they don't really they don't they just they have no desire to try supplements and um, so if, if that is the case, uh, put your alternative on there of what you think, uh, from the feedmemore.com website, uh, what you feel would be equivalent to that. And, uh, we can, we can discuss that and try to make you happy. Um, if supplements are not your thing or your deal. So, but thank you guys for everyone for the reviews. All right. Let's talk some wrestling. What do you got? Well, this week, I think it's only fair to start off well, with the passing of Rosie, as everyone knows him on WWE TV. Um, just uh, unfortunate. He's young, 47, I think. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I feel bad for Roman. Obviously, that was his brother, and I can't even... Sucks. So it, yeah. it's just life. It's another one on the damn list of uh, wrestlers. I don't know what did they say what the cause was or anything on that. Yet? No, that that never came out. Did you ever meet Rosie at all or work with him or? I met him a few times backstage, and he was very like, like Roman's a really good guy. And like, sure, he just same guy. Like, okay, just he was just a bigger guy. Like, same guy. Like, just very nice, kind, gentle human being. So, I only met know. him once for some reason. He was down at OVW, and he was training a little bit, but. Uh... Yeah, that's uh, not much experience. Not a good. I didn't uh, know. Yeah, it, it, that's too young, man. But uh, and I, I'm, I'm sorry. It just sucks. There's there's nothing else. I mean, you could say it's just a bad situation. But mm-hmm. um, wrestling wise, this week did you catch Raw or SmackDown? Yeah, I always watch everything. I go back. I'll fast forward through. But uh, I wanted to see things this week with the the whole superstar shakeup and. How these new people are. I feel like Raw got the better better end of the deal. I SmackDown feel like took... feels very depleted on talent looking at it. Like uh it just doesn't it never has come it never comes off the same. I don't know why. I think that but SmackDown did so well for the last couple it's a better show and it's written better and it's it's very and I was watching this week, like watching AJ and Baron, I was like, This is nice, like seeing like kind of a you know, they're putting the focus on AJ. That, they had a great match. Uh, I got to go and, back and, and watch that. I saw that on. I, I put it on for the week, but I didn't watch that match in detail. And taking not, I'm not saying taking a chance with Baron. You can tell they have big things in store for him, but like a different person closing out SmackDown. I think SmackDown is just going to keep elevating their guys better and maybe heat them up a little bit to go to Raw because 
Raw is just always going to be the focal point, I guess. I it's don't know. always it always has been. It always will be. And SmackDown's yeah. still important, and it, it it's just not it's not never been Raw at that level. And maybe being live, that can they could start to gain some traction with that over time. It's not going to happen overnight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Raw just has that built in. Monday nights like that audience for wrestling, and 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 whatnot. And wrestling, it's it's been Tuesday, it's been Wednesday, it's been Thursday, and it's Friday. It's just never Mondays like the. I don't know why that's like the wrestling night. It so is. It, it just yeah. For whatever reason, it just and it to me when I have Raw on on Monday, it has just a, it just feels better being on than having it on on Tuesday, and I can't explain that. But no, it, I completely agree. I I don't know why it like it almost is like wrestling is supposed to be on on Monday, but on mm-hmm. Tuesday it feels a little more forced. And I don't. Yeah. And that's just that's my like from just a human being with the TV on putting it on. I'll, and I don't. I'll just put it on, and it feels weird. Like so. Um, just like this podcast every Monday, iTunes. That's what uh, we get. That that's our big day for listens and everybody. You know. I'm glad we never switched. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we do Monday. And uh, it because we're different, we, we get out first in the week and we're out of the gate first, and I think that's important. Hopefully, we keep that momentum going. But, um, I think one thing I noticed this week is uh, I think Braun has done a good job with everything, with uh, sure, with uh, how they have used him and um, him and Big Show going out there. Did you watch that match or no? Uh, I believe i did oh with the chain wrestling yeah yeah, yeah. Did definitely watch this it was better than the kane big show chain wrestling um, okay and not that that was ever bad but it was but it was like hell of an arm drag yeah they, they <laughs> several of them i two or three of them but uh no at least they're trying you know big show's just so goddamn big like it, it it's nothing's gonna be natural throwing a guy over in that like position big show getting arm drag is never gonna be natural no, but watching that, I was—I don't know if you thought the same thing. I'm sure you did, but it was almost like I know they were trying, like, kind of prove, like, hey, we can we can do stuff. But it it's such a mental disconnect when you see people of that stature. I think do stuff like that. Do you it, think so or no? It is a little bit, but like it's uh, it's all in how you do it. They didn't go overboard with it. They did they did a little bit, but like mm-hmm. uh, like the thing is, it, like here's my thing. It like the the having the arm and he goes back and then big show helps him nip up. Like it's mm-hmm. a nice little thing to show like, Oh, this is a big guy. But like, I think if you do something like that, you got to follow it up with a big power move. Like, okay. and, and be really impressive. And I don't know. I can't remember. He might have, he might've slammed him right after that. Um, but I, I think you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go back to what, what got you to the dance from a psychology standpoint. That's why it's like, I always say people need to respect the styles differently because mm-hmm. there, there's a reason like anybody can go in there and learn and do anything but there's certain things that apply more to like others and like what you should do and shouldn't do and but i thought they i didn't i thought they did just enough and didn't go too too overboard with it no no it was fine I, like and it, that was refreshing to see big show in a in a spot where like oh i could watch this is interesting and most of the time it's you know he he, but, he had it looks like he has since he's lost weight, he seems a little more motivated to me. Okay. And that, that's just from looking, from being there. And I, I like Big Show a lot. And um, I think he has a little bit of a wild hair up his ass to kind of go out on a good note. If sure. that makes sense. And like, no, oh, yeah. And, uh, but he, I mean, his body is beat up. And, but mm-hmm. he, and I don't think he can five days a week go out there and be on fire every night. And then maybe he can. But I, I mean, mm-hmm. I think he needs to be selective on the times that he does. But I thought Monday was one of those when he wants to do something, he he can. So, but he, I mean, the Big Show used to come drop kicks off the top rope, WCW. Sure. So like, I mean, he's been in this for a long time. His body, and I know from talking to him, his body is beat the fuck up, like hips, knees, everything, shoulders. So, the fact that he's still out there and going strong is uh, very impressive. All right. I still would like to see a change. I was telling you, like, change up in character a little bit sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's done so many different things, though. And, like, if this is the last year, it's, it's good. To, he's, he's established already. So, um, But I, I, I enjoyed watching him on Monday a lot. What about uh, we got old Jinder Mahal's the number one contender? 
Yeah, and I actually, I'm okay. I feel like Jinder has gotten a done a great job of just getting people to talk about himself, whether through his physique, through, you know, he's... He's more relevant he's now everywhere. than he was. Ever. Yeah. You know, dare I say, like, he's he's kind of, in a weird way, like, the talk of everything. Someone made this great point online. They were like, people were always sick of, you know, or always complaining, oh, it's always Cena, it's always Orton in the main event, and then Jinder gets to this spot that whatever's coming up, and they're like... Oh fuck this! Like it's just nice to see someone different. They brought up the Bollywood boys to be with him. Like obviously they're going who, for that Indian market. Who are they? I just, I just assume they were two guys. Uh, I don't want to say independent wrestlers because they're legit from India. They did a lot of stuff for like Global Force, but they they were oh, okay. in NXT. But I think they brought them up. The vibe I get is very kind of like it because they're smaller guys. They're very I small. saw that on uh, the SmackDown thing. They the two guys. They're, those are the two that interfered then. Yeah. Oh, so they were I, definitely I figure, smaller. Yeah. I figure like a kind of like a J and J security type to go with him. Like, you know, they can take a bunch of bumps and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a spot, and it's great to get in that India market. Which I mean, I can imagine there's big money with that TV deal, or no? For an in, for I've India? always heard, yeah, the India Indian TV deal is is quite lucrative for them. So, which was one of the reasons Kali was always paid really well, from what I understood, um, because sure. of that market. And everything and keeping them happy. I've gone over there and done media for them. And wrestling is huge over there. And that always made me raise... I always had questions about how we were paid on on action figures and merchandise, merchandising. Mm-hmm. Because they're selling all our stuff over there too. Um, every, okay. In every country. I mean, like, mass amounts. And I don't really always... I don't know how that's all... It just is. It just something just seems off with the whole deal on all that. But like, and there's no way to keep track and no. whatnot on our end. But like, it's because I remember going over there promoting. They were feed me more t-shirts, and I'm just like, you know, when you get our royalty things, it's hard to like. You look at them and you don't. You, there's, you never know. Like, mm-hmm. it's just it's impossible to know what you're making and whatnot. So, but it's uh, yeah, the market out there, the, wrestling is like the biggest thing outside of. Cricket, I believe. In okay. India, wrestling is like number two. So, huge, huge following in India. It was... Uh, I know. So old it makes Stu, sense. Uh, Stu Bennett's headed out to Pakistan, I believe, next month for a big wrestling event. Wait, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I set that up. It was a one-day, one show. He's going out there to, to, to referee the old main event and make an appearance in, in Pakistan. Wait, he's refereeing? He'll be. I believe he does a. Uh, he he is refereeing in the main event. I noticed Steamboat will do that occasionally. Will do the old referee spot. Oh sure, yeah. That man. That might be. I might do the old left arm referee gimmick for me. <laughs> fucking show up with my bowling wrist strap on, elbow pad, fucking shoulder harness. Just keep that shoulder locked and ready and primed for that fucking three count. I've I've brought in special guest referees. I think uh, Brett was supposed to do it on one of my shows, and something happened, and uh, and he was cool with doing it. And then um, Jerry Lynn did it on one of my shows. Uh, it's always a, a interesting thing to bring someone in to, to have them ref. You bring me in for a Keith Lee Jeff Cobb match. Special guest referee, the big guy. <laughs> we start the angle from there. <laughs> shove 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 fucking look my arm's fucking injured buddy fucking big guy meet chin music fuck this another referee comes in they finish the deal <laughs> fucking set up for next time <laughs> i don't have any notes on wrestling this week whatsoever i did watch both shows um i heard a rumor that 205 live is going away they're they're gonna cut it to half an hour wait they're oh so, so it's not going away they're just cutting it to half an hour there's just i've heard that and it's not. I don't believe it's the guy's fault. I really don't. I believe that they've not. been they've been portrayed in a in an environment that makes them look less than what less than other people, and they're filming in a tight spot. And I think they that film after the show, right after SmackDown, yeah. which is when the crowd is dead. They've already seen the main. It, you can't. You got to go before if you're going to yep. make that show work. It has to be before. But problem is, is there's not always the best psychology and all that stuff, and they. They'll go out there and do every move in the book before that SmackDown starts. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a tough deal. Just a real, real tough situation. I heard that not a lot of people watch them. I'm not shitting on it. I, I think that they need, you know, guys are doing great jobs and playing their role perfectly, but it's just a tough situation to be in. I think people take them for less, 
for less than rather than being this cool hip division. I don't think they're portrayed that way. There's so. always that thing of people talk about like having the looking, looking like a star. I believe that is a real thing. I, I really do think that having a certain size and look to you for mass appeal does still exist. It always did. Like, I'm not saying it's the only thing, but people to say it doesn't exist is stupid. Um, and, well, it does a exist. Casual van, it does. It, it's not, and people can get offended at it, but it's a real thing. And like, it's Daniel Bryan and me have talked about this before. And like, he always said he never felt like a real, he never felt like The Rock or Stone Cold or that type mm-hmm. of superstar. He's not, he's a different type of superstar. But like, yeah. he's, he's loved, but like, there's something about a guy walking through an airport and everybody recognizes him to another guy that, f- like, and nobody blinks an eye. Like, there's yeah. something to that. For his, I mean, he got, o- I mean, potentially one of the most, if not the most over guys since fucking Steve Austin. Dan, like, yeah. before his body size and type, that it was a real atypical situation. He deserves all the credit in the world, but you wouldn't expect someone of that stature to get to that, you know. Yeah, and he did that, a great job. So- he broke down barriers on that, but, like, it's still... It was, I mean, it, it's a real thing that does exist. And I wonder, like, those guys weren't, aren't put in the best position and whatnot, but they're all phenomenal. And yeah. Why, it, it, but just keep them, why not just have them part of the show? Like, exactly. Make SmackDown three hours then. Like, Raw's three, SmackDown's three. And Oh, that'd be tough. <laughs> I mean, but. Three hours, man. You got yeah. a whole other show. You put, you put a couple of those matches in. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. It, it really isn't, like. Rather than like, oh, these guys are special to get their own show. Like, no, not really. It's mm-hmm. wrestling. Like, I don't know. It's just. It... It, well, they put the focus on that. I don't know if you know this is happening because that was like the kind of the Hunter's new thing for last summer. And for this summer, it's the women's tournament coming up where they have 32 women competing in the women's tournament. Oh, really? Which is mind boggling to me. And a lot of women are going to be, you know, sweeped up and you know, held to deals and, uh, promise the world. But like, yeah. But just like the, to think that I, it would be very difficult to think of 32 women on the independent scene that could perform at a WWE level in a tournament. I think it's going to be interesting to see, to see it, especially that first round. Oh, like I love have, it. To... It makes for great television. <laughs> it does. It does. Oh, so. I can only imagine it's, you never know. They they usually do a good job at recruiting talents for all those things. So we did have a lot of questions here. We can move away from talk like that. I don't know, I don't know if you want to get into that. Yeah, no. There's not a lot outside of the wrestling world. Outside of that, that that was pretty much. Um, I, I didn't have too much for that this week. I think before we go into some questions, I want to go ahead and uh, the the quote of the week, book of the week, nutrition tip, and workout tip. Um, go ahead and knock all those out. I always enjoy doing these for the listeners out there. And uh, the quote of the week this week is, uh, I never trusted my talent, so I outworked everyone. And that is from uh, the 10X Quotes by Grant Cardone. Um, Yeah, just always just bust your ass, go hard, moral of the story. And uh, book of the week. Book, actually, I put off buying this book several times on Audible because I thought it was going to be a really negative book kind of going against mm-hmm. everything, but I was like, no, I got to give it a chance. And it's called uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck by, <laughs> by Mark Manson. And it's kind of anti, I don't want to say it's anti secret or anti anti positivity, but it gives you a different look into people who maybe lie to themselves. And okay. but it, it, it was really, really good. Hmm. It wasn't as it wasn't negative like I thought it was. This guy has a very good, unique perspective on life, and uh, and he, he I thought he did a good job of portraying that. So that book is definitely worth checking out. Nutrition tip of the week: Not all proteins are created equal, and, and what I mean by that is is all proteins have different fat content. Things like beef, steak, pork, chicken, turkey, salmon, mahi mahi, eggs, egg whites. Bacon, etc. You guys got to realize, no matter what kind of diet you're you're on, that having eighty percent beef that is twenty percent fat has a hell of a lot more fat than than turkey or or mahi mahi or chicken or lean beef that has ninety nine percent fat free. 
it, it, you got to be very aware of the fat content and things. And it goes back to reading labels. And, and, and usually the better uh, the cut taste, the more fat it has. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it's just something to be aware of on that. Because not everybody, they think sometimes, you know, they get steak and brown rice, but the steak has 70 grams of fat in it. And you're Jeez. eating 70 grams of fat with 70 grams or 80 grams of carbs. It's fucking horrible for you, but you think you're eating healthy. So it's little things like that, guys, that just being aware uh, and on the lookout for that. And a workout tip of the week. If you're looking to maximize your bicep development, look into buying a workout device called the Arm Blaster. It's on Amazon. It's $39.99 or under. And what it does is it allows you to, it locks you into position. It goes around your neck. <clears throat> and it keeps your body in the perfect position for curling without using your shoulders where you got to use less weight. Dude, look it up. It's amazing. I've been, and this isn't a plug for it or anything. I don't, don't get any money for this. I've had mm-hmm. this. I bring it to the gym with me occasionally, and I use it when I work out at the old big guy gym at home. And it, uh, it is great for locking you in. And you don't, like, usually when you do bicep curls with dumbbells or barbells and you start going to a certain weight, you start cheating and swinging yep. the But this, it, it allows you not to cheat. And where huh. you, you have to use your bicep to curl the weight. And, and it, it's, you don't do as much weight, but your biceps reap the benefit of it. And you maximize that, that tension put on your biceps. So check that out, guys, because what man doesn't want a big fucking pair of biceps? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a lot of them. I don't know. But I've always, I love arms. I think they look great. So on me. Great. Uh, I like the tips. I, I learned, I'm like, all right, what do, I really look forward to that every week because I'm like, what could I steal? And That's what I, I try shit. to always just give a little insight into what I do and what I've learned over the years and uh, share my secrets. Um, all right. So, yeah, that's, that's what I got this week. So a couple questions I had. One was from Michael Seawright on Twitter. Uh, a while back, Bruce Pritchard stated that WWF would sell shows at – at an all in rates. Do indie promotions do the same? Well, Michael, yes, they do. In fact, that's my, uh, that's the best form of events that I like to run outside my comfort zone. You know, I don't, uh, it's risk versus reward. So I could book a building, pay the talent, hope for a big crowd, but there's areas and new buildings and new venues. I don't know how I'm going to do. So sold shows are actually, um, beneficial for me and they're beneficial for organizations that like to have them. For example, if, if you run like a, I don't know, PAL basketball, but you know, you get 700 people at your, you know, games, you might want to do a wrestling show because if you do the same thing for a set price, you could double, triple, quadruple your profit. And, um, that's kind of what I do. That's what big, uh, big Mike Lombardi does a lot of, uh, not all the time, but enough of the time where, uh, we do sell events, and it's it's a kind of a I don't want to say that common in the independence, but there's about you know maybe six companies out there, myself included, that uh, are actually doing so. In fact, you should see this thing. I had it made. Uh, I have a brochure that uh, that Mark Carino just made for me, which is great. That has uh, has you and Cody and Wade, and I'm uh, selling events. Like it's pretty, like a really you know Brett's on it. All the guys I've booked, and they go out to different organizations to potentially purchase a show am i in a good position on this poster or did he really you are really fuck me over big, on this one you're the biggest one on the fucking poster okay, cool yeah. that, you know <laughs> not that it matters you know but you know it matters <laughs> well it's, it's really interesting well not for nothing it's interesting dealing with these people because every time you say not for nothing i think it's scott cardinal at smoky bones <laughs> not eating, for nothing. E- eating his metrics bar brownie protein metrics thing is uh not for nothing i'm taller than you yeah no shit you're taller than me <laughs> and apparently i, I say like dare I, dare i say apparently I've, I've i've heard the retweets from from jay silva saying that i say that a little bit too much <laughs> <laughs> but with the sold show things you know what happens a lot is i'll try to pitch other talent too and a lot of the people that buy the shows they're wrestling fans but it's it's almost mind-blowing because i'll mention people from you know other companies or or not that far removed from TV and they won't know who the fuck they are um so it it really my strong selling points are you know yourself Cody a swoggle and whenever old Wade wants to get on the the old trunks again would be my my guys yeah no Wade's doing it right he took a a good year off chilled out 
enjoy life. And uh, I wish I could have done that. It would have been nice. But I'm doing other things, and like, I like staying busy. And but I've I've told you like I need to do I need to do a vacation eventually. You do, yeah. I, 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 me and Priscilla shot over to California to Burbank for Easter to see her family. Mm -hmm. And I came back that night because I wanted, because I knew it was going to be a short week at home rather than just chilling out. Like I can't like, can't relax. I can't relax. I go, we can make it home. I can get home. I can unpack and like, and I can be ready and go Monday and get all my stuff done. And like, and she gets it. She knows how I am. I, I, it, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. And I. I need to go take a fucking vacation and just do drugs and drink the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. You need no, to. I, that's, you I need like, to. Of course. Give me, give me a bottle of GHB. Give me some fucking hard liquor, some fucking weed, and mm-hmm. just leave me the fuck alone. No no phone. No, just nobody knows I exist. And me on the beach with Sunny Sophie and have a little Priscilla out there and just fuck the, fuck the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, any other questions, it? or do you want me yeah, to... Yeah, sorry. I, I think I'm getting a little drunk from uh, this old Zevia with Ryback, uh, Tito's. Ryback says he wants to do hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Lewis, Lewisburg... No, excuse me. Lewis 87. Man, you have a fucking tough name. With supplements not being regulated, regulated how can someone ensure they're not buying junk? That's a question for you, not me, I guess. Great question. And there are ways uh, that does exist where companies have been busted for um, not meeting label requirements. And it's a very important thing in the supplement industry. And and the way around that, or not around it, the way essentially to make sure that you're not um, a victim of that is is to have the supplements tested. And not and when I say... When I say that, I'm not talking about the consumer. It's up to the man, me as far as like, and I've worked with the manufacturer and, and whatnot. And, and the one I am working with is top notch and, and they are the real deal. But essentially what I got to go do is uh, take the supplements and have them tested. And, okay. and it's kind of like a compliance thing where they are, they are brought in and, and it costs, it costs a lot of money. Um, but they bring them in and they, they you take a random you take three random bottles of each each supplement, and you mm-hmm. say test it, and uh, from different boxes, and 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 you come back, and they give you the results, and they let you know if if it's what you're taking is the real deal. <laughs> and, and and for the most part, uh, the majority of companies, they they adhere to that, but there's some out there that have that have not done that, and they've been busted, and and it okay. is it, it is a horrible thing that exists. So that is something that with this, with this year we are going to be doing actually too, um, okay. just to give the the customer peace of mind. That was one of the things dis- discussed actually with who I'm working with on um, for the expos is actually having the results made public and I kind of display there from the compl- compliance testing so that 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 people that come up to the booth at the expos oh wow like you've had this done yeah this this is the real deal. Because and nobody else there probably has, right? No, I'm I, I, not to say, I'm not to say nobody. I don't know, but I, majority, yeah. majority won't and don't. So, okay. yeah, that is that's definitely um, that. And I've already discussed that with the manufacturer, and I've told them that. And I said, just so you know, I will be having these tested, and they're they're totally cool with it because it's. And I feel like that's a good way to keep your manufacturer, just to let them know, like not to cut corners and whatnot. Because whenever you're dealing with money, you never know. But the company yep, that I'm sure. working with, it was they, they are very, very good, and they have a great track record, and um, that, is, that has never been an issue. So, Okay. Uh, last question from PR underscore 92 on Twitter. If there was a movie of the big guy, who would play you and who would play Pat Buck? <sighs> <laughs> I've always said, heard that people say that uh, what's-his-name looks a lot like me, um, the, the Steve Wilkos. Oh, okay. From the yeah. Jerry Springer show. I remember early on, people used to make that comparison. Um, I could see that. I could see that. I would like him to be a little bigger, obviously. And uh, he's a tall man. He's got the it factor. He's got that height. Does he? But he, I would like I a little. Like, I would like a little more muscle mass on him. So I might. Yeah. I might turn you know a blind eye to drug testing for him if he did that role, and uh, <laughs> if he wanted to hop on something to fucking peak for that for that role um, and whatnot. 
But uh, that's who would play me. But did I tell you, b- before I say this, who would play you, do you think? I don't know. See, it's hard to say because, like, I mean, you're 35, I'm 33. So, like, we're <laughs> not at the point this where... Is- Martin Short playing Pat Buck would really pop in. <laughs> like, yeah, I, w- I would pick a CGI Chuck Norris if I could pick okay. someone. <laughs> yeah, very good. I, have you ever seen the movie Clifford with Martin Short? Yes, uh, one absolutely. Of my, Larry the Scary Rex, he's a scary dinosaur. Yes. That is one of my favorite movies, by the way, because <laughs> Martin Short, a grown man, pulls that role off. He looks like a creepy little bastard child. And it is, I, I loved Martin Short when I was a kid. So that would that would pop me to have him play you, <laughs> Martin Short. Yeah, that really would just grow him a little beard and just fucking a little run this be this run these wrestling promotions and Martin Short just talking to me like I need you to go out there and bring the people in. <laughs> just, yeah, just with your energy. Cool. Just, yeah, uh, I tell you by the way that I actually and I can't name the names for him because you're not supposed to do that when you're discussing stuff. I last week took a phone call for a TV show uh, mm-hmm. to, to host the TV show, um, the, the, the uh, traveling channel, uh, a deal for that, which was uh, a very random thing that came up. But we did that, and uh, I don't know what, what's going to happen with that or whatnot. It was a good phone call as far as just discussing everything with a couple people mm-hmm. <laughs> and whatnot. And one of the guys from Impractical Jokers, one of the producers from that, but... I think they listened to the podcast. And I'd, I was thinking about that. The phone call, though, it was like a serious, like, you know, I mean, it was a laid back phone call, but it wasn't like sure. um, they kept saying, like, you know, we'd be great to get your big personality on TV. And I'm just thinking, like, you know, I'm not a comedian as far as, like, I don't have jo- Like, I felt like they were almost waiting for a joke, like, uh, ah, to okay. read a joke. And I was just kind of like, I was working out and I, was, I just wanted to go back to finish my workout. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like but it was a good phone call. But, you know, uh, that was cool. Well, if you remember, we kind of, I think, it, I think it definitely came from someone who listens to podcasts, and they're a legit producer for uh, these shows, which was like, oh, that's interesting. But you've said before, like, you know, the man versus food kind of thing. Yeah. Or the, There's you so would many, be a good fit for that. Yeah, it would be great. And, it, and I, But they even go, they, if you could pick somebody to be with you, like, I don't know. Like, I don't hang around people that often. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, put somebody with me. I don't produce the show. Like, I don't care. Like, I could, honestly, you could put me... We discussed putting me with like a little person and like is the big guy and the little guy. And like, like it's cool. Like I'll, I'll make anything work. You just sure. have to, like, I, I don't have a list of midgets outside of Hornswoggle. Yeah. No, I don't know where you're going to find a talented little, Sorry. little person. Quote unquote, little person. Uh, <laughs> Pick but, Torito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that would be great. Just bullying. He'd be so mad. Yeah. Oh, I like Torito a lot too, but um, that, and then I actually just got an email. I got to check it out. Uh, a movie, and I can't discuss the movie. It got a movie role came in from a guy, a legit fucking real deal movie, and uh, for a nice little role in that. So I did a, a a read for that, which was hilarious last week. With it was actually me. And Priscilla filmed it, and like Sonny and Sophie kept coming into frame, and like <laughs> I'm I'm in my fucking big guy Ryback. The part required me to be wear, like the Ryback vest. Um, yeah, that was what was was asked. Uh, to be wow. like in Harley boots and jeans and kind of like a a biker type look. And um, I'm like trying to be this badass. And I got Sonny and Sophie start fucking fighting while I'm while I'm trying to do my lines. <laughs> and I literally just crack up laughing. God damn it. And I just told her, I go, we should just send them all the shitty outtakes and say, take it, take it or leave it, guys. This is what you're getting. <laughs> that probably would work 100%. Yeah. When you told me this, I know we can't say anything about it. God, if this happens, I would. It'd be pretty. I'm big. the biggest mark. Yeah. I'm the biggest mark for this stuff. This is my world, and you know, it's. I'm it's, not like thrilled. Like I don't really care. I've never like been like, oh, I want to be in movies or anything. Like I, it's cool. I don't think I like I. I would bust my ass doing it, and I think I naturally would be a great fit. But I don't. I'm like, it's not kind of never been my main priority. Which the guy that wanted me to sign with him before. He's been he stayed in contact and he seems like a good dude so he sure. uh, he has some he he's he knows some people so uh, it'd be cool if it happens it happens if not no hair off my back uh I had fun doing it so all right that's all the questions I had but I'm really excited uh about our next I don't know if you want to go to uh, I had, had a lot really... of questions but I think I know we don't want to go too long with questions right well we're we're 
been doing this for a while, and we got some. The people are waiting outside that courtroom, man. So uh, let me let me do one question that I want to sure. do on um, just so because uh, it deals with the supplements, and I think it is important because I've had a, quite a few emails on it. And then we will uh, we will go ahead and uh, we also have our from Mark to Shark segment tonight. I yes. don't know if you've uh, do you want to do that before the big guys court. I figure let's let's go with what works, and we're going to try new segments. We love the feedback was off the charts for Big Guy Court. People love the Big Guy's Court. Yeah, uh, I had a great Eddie was fuck fucking killed it. Eddie, um, Eddie, great job with Shining Wizards, the Shining Wizards podcast. Thank you. It Eddie. was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this week, and I I say we do that. Say what? Uh, say your question. Maybe we'll take a little break and then we'll do a big guy court. But Let's what do you do got that. there? Let's do one question here and then we'll go ahead and we'll go to break. And it's from Jay Cunder. Um, he goes, "When Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner comes out, will it be safe to take with Wake Up Unlimited Energy?" And that's a great question. And I've gotten a lot that a lot actually. Yes, but you, you're going to have to. The, there is a little bit of caffeine in the Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner. Um, it, it is not dosed like the Wake Up Unlimited Energy. What I actually would recommend is, though, that if you are going to run the, the Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner, that you you do the half a scoop of Wake Up Unlimited Energy to keep your caffeine content within um, that kind of that reasonable dosage for the day. Um, but even if you took the Wake Up Unlimited Energy at the suggested dose, two capsules twice a day, and you take a full serving of Wake Up Unlimited Energy, you're still going to be within that reasonable range. Um, what is a reasonable range for caffeine, you think? <clears throat> they kind of, So they say everybody's different, but it's kind of that 300, 400, 500 milligrams is kind okay. of like, but, but some people honestly take 100 milligrams and they're, they're very jittery. Everybody mm-hmm. is different on that. But, and, and there's people, like I've talked about it before, I was taking thousands of milligrams at one point. And a lot, really? of, a lot of wrestlers consume caffeine morning to night because you just, yep. they have it at TV and, and it, you get used to just drinking it just to drink it. And a lot of people will have three or four coffees in a day and have well over a thousand milligrams, but they never know it. I, yeah. when you're aware, I, I always say, I always try to keep it under 500 milligrams. And if I, if I'm at that, I usually switch, I'll do decaf coffee, um, which has like 16, to, 10 to 16 milligrams of caffeine and like a mm-hmm. decaf coffee. And like that way I'll keep myself within that range kind of, but uh, it, it definitely can be taken with it. And, uh, it, it's just, I I'd say you don't want to take a serving of it, then take a full scoop of wake up a limited energy. Cause you're getting, you're getting a little bit of a good caffeine kick right there. Not to say that it's bad or good. I just say you want to space it out when you do that. Take your wake, uh, your shell shock early in the morning or in the morning and take your wake up a limited energy probably in the afternoon if you're going to do it like that. And then your final serving of the, the, the shell shock at night or late afternoon, I should say. So, but the caffeine content in that, in that is, I believe it's around 80 milligrams per two capsules or two tablets. It's like a tough, it's so, like a cup of coffee kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not though. It's not the, it's not the 350 milligrams in the full serving of wake up unlimited energy. So, which oh, is cool. dose like that because that is within the, the normal range for the day and there are people out there that are that are just their receptors are shot and need that yeah. high dose of caffeine so that's why i always say you could do a quarter of a scoop or half a scoop of that and you could still be you'll you will feel the effects i try to make the supplements to appeal to everybody which you're not always going to be able to do but uh we've done a good job so far so interesting that's really interesting information there on that note let's take a quick break and uh we'll be back in the courtroom Hey, it's Pat Buck again, and I, I'm going to bug you again. Why haven't you signed up for Blue Apron yet? The Blue Apron gods have given you this opportunity to sign up for this amazing fresh ingredient service, and you haven't done it. Why not? they got a variety of recipes every single week. You can customize it so you don't get bored. Or maybe you're allergic to something, and you can avoid that. You can get delicious meals like salmon piccata with orzo and broccoli, vegetable chili, and baked sweet potatoes with crispy tortilla strips. If you don't like that, change it. They have other delicious stuff coming to you every single week. You won't even have to prepare for dinner. The box is there, fresh ingredients. Everything's beautifully placed together. Instructions so you can follow it. I went to four years of uh, culinary school. I still have no idea what I'm doing, but I can do that with Blue Apron. Blueapron.com slash conversations with an S. Three free... uh, God, I almost made it through. (laughs) Three free weeks of meals with free shipping. Again, you'll love how good it feels, how it tastes. Blue Apron. Blueprint.com backslash conversations. 
a better way to cook. Enjoy the rest of the show. In the world of pro wrestling, there are great fans, and then there are fucking marks. Fucking marks are negative wrestling fans who have let the negative influences of life, society, and the media carry over to their consumption of pro wrestling. They are lost souls whom sole mission seems to make everyone as miserable as them. The following fucking mark is a real life person whom has been blocked on social media by the big guy Ryback for making a shitty negative comment. Attorney Buck will defend this low life piece of shit loser in hopes of the big guy Ryback unblocking and giving this fucking mark a second chance at being a great fan. Without further ado, welcome to the big guy's court. Please rise. The court of the big guy circuit fucking mark division is now in session. The honorable Judge Ryback presiding. Everyone but the fucking mark may be seated. Attorney Buck, is the defense ready? Yes, your honorable big guy, we are ready. All right. Please state the fucking Mark's name, the comment made, along with the date and form of social media. Well, your your honorable big guy... uh, Wait, hold on. We got to do this right. Okay. Court is now in session. All right. Now it's official. Your honorable big guy, first I have a question because I'm representing a female client today. And is she to be referred to as a Mark or another term? Uh, I've never really given this much thought. (laughs) <laughs> but as the judge, the jury, and the executioner, fucking Mark, I feel like, of the female form is appropriate. Okay. Well, your, honor- your honorable big guy, I am representing Twitter user Scream underscore its. And she pleads. Does she, does she have a picture of Paige in her profile? She does have a picture. And I will get to that uh, information rather quickly. She pleads not guilty in the courtroom of the big guy. Okay. Okay. Now, a little background information. She does have a picture. She is a lovely woman. Uh, When you say lovely, what is what do you mean by lovely? I think she's a pretty lady. I think she meets. uh, But with the more impressive, more relevant information to this case, your honorable big guy. Weight wise, under two hundred or over two hundred. I I cannot tell as the picture seems to be of just the facial area. Yes. Anybody out there listening knows what that's about. Okay, keep going. (laughs) Well, your honorable big guy, she meets human standards just by having her face on a Twitter. She's not an egg. She's not a a uh, an image, and uh, she's a real person. So she has a lot of tattoos. That does does go a long ways with the big guy showing your actual face. Uh, Yes, sir. Accountability. (laughs) Now, uh, she does seem to have her life together. She's thirty three years old. She's a she's a mother. She's a hairdresser, and she's from the New England area. She also mentioned to me that she does help out the the wrestling promotion, uh, which is a uh, beloved smart fan promotion called Beyond Wrestling. She offers transportation for a lot of the wrestlers. Okay. The date of the offense was was apparently years ago. So long ago, she couldn't quote uh, the date of the supposed offense. Uh, she know- probably during my big hot run. A lot of negative fucking marks made a lot of comments during that hot run. <laughs> my glory is know- 2012 <laughs> and 13. She noticed that while uh, your honorable, bi- or dare I say, Ryback was driving a certain video, uh, was driving. Uh, Ryback was filming a video, mysteriously wearing a uh, a funny hat and a wig, operating uh, a car. She noticed that this man, who we'll just call named uh, Mr. Furlife, was driving very fast, and she grew increasingly concerned for his safety. She decided to message the comment, that isn't very safe, to which Mr. Furlife, uh, who was played by Ryback, then blocked her immediately. Do you remember such an offense, Your Honor? I So there are people that have made comments. I have the dash cam in the car where I can okay. hook, the, hook the phone up to to do the videos. And these feed me morons feel the need to, to judge um, and think that I am driving and holding the phone and, and recording. Uh. When I do Snapchats at lights, 
when I am stopped occasionally. Um, but, but whenever I'm recording, I put it in the, if you see my, my big guy truck and big guy challenger, I got dash cam holders that can hold the phone so that I am not holding the phone. So that was why this fucking mark of the female form was blocked that she just figured that she you know, has it all figured out, which is a typical fucking mark. And, uh, and she was blocked accordingly. Well, your honorable big guy, in her testimony in the big guy court, she was stating that she has done no wrong and only was looking out for the safety of yourself. She is a mother. She is a wrestling fan. And she wanted to keep her part in motherly advice by hoping you would not cause a, uh, a pile up. I, I, of, of this nature, this is not quite as serious as other offenses. And, um, but I do still think it comes down to being a fucking mark and thinking you have it all figured out and not having all the facts and then just stating things, um, that you just don't know anything about quite frankly, but I do appreciate her, um, having concern for my safety, but, uh, rather I would hope she would focus on her life moving forward And, uh, the big guy is all right. And I got my dash cams and, um, but, but again, this is not quite as serious as other situations, but, um, yeah, that's all I really got to say about that. Well, in my, in my closing words, I, uh, I urge, I urge your honorable big guy to please speak from the kindness of your heart. Will you dare unblock, uh, miss scream underscore it's. Attorney Buck, I appreciate you bringing all these facts to light. Um, I'm going to take a quick recess, and I will come back with uh, the judge's decision. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, I discovered something really big, the best new way to buy business travel. It's called Upside.com. And I'm telling you, if you're not a business traveler and you know someone who is, you have to tell them about Upside. Here's why I love it. Every time you buy a trip at Upside, you save a ton of money, and they give you an Amazon gift card worth $100, $200, even $300 every time. The way they do it is really clever. They bundle your flights and your hotel together for one low price. Bundled pricing saves money, especially on business travel, so Upside gives you free Amazon gift cards for it. If you're a frequent business traveler, your company saves a ton of money, and you get thousands a year for buying your air and hotel together at Upside. Plus, you still get all your miles. You'd be crazy not to check out Upside.com. If you're shopping for business travel, it takes three minutes to see how much you can save by buying flights and hotel for one low price. I can't believe it's taken someone so long to do this. And check out what I've arranged to you. Use BizTrip, code Biz, B-I-Z-T-R-I-P, and you're guaranteed to get at least $200 Amazon gift card for your first trip. BizTrip gets you at least a $200 Amazon gift card for free. How can you not do it? It's a no-brainer. Save big on travel and get a big gift card every trip. I love Upside.com. Upside.com. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Enjoy the show. Order in the court. Order in the big guy's court. Attorney Buck, you've, uh, you've done a great job today. Uh, in defense of uh, scream underscore it. But again, as the judge, the jury, and the executioner, I find this fucking mark of the female form jumping to conclusions without knowing the facts and uh, making comments that are out of line and out of place. And uh, I find the fucking mark guilty. (laughs) Court is adjourned. Fuck. I, I am Owen too. God I remember I, I remember that comment by the way. I was pissed because I remember it was just like it, it was a little more to it than did she send you a screenshot? No of the actual there was a little more to it than that. Nobody's just blocked to just get blocked. you it's it's for a good reason. so it was uh, I believe this particular comment was there was something like. I don't remember. I wish she would send a screenshot of it, but either way, it was it was more than just what she's letting on, which is okay. usually the fucking marks will alter the truth in their mind over time. So um, it's all right, though. Not, she's not a horrible person. No, she's very kind. I liked her a lot. Uh, 
I got another one. It's a it's a doozy. Big guy court is now in session. Victim number two. Well, your honorable big guy, my next client is one of completely different nature. His Twitter name is J Kool Aid W. Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take a drink. Hold he on, think- I, need to, I need to take another drink. Yes. All right, you may proceed. Well, your honorable big guy, he thinks that it is messed up and that he has been a victim of blocking by Ryback 22. And he also, like my other two unsuccessful clients, pleads not guilty. Of course. (laughs) They've never done any wrong in their fucking Mark lives. His background information goes as such. He's 27 years old and a father of two. He works Mm. in the granite. Not a virgin. That's nice. He works in the granite industry. He said he was a fan of wrestling his whole life and a fan of you in WWE. However, the date of the offense, which he cannot remember, he tagged you. He tagged you in a picture thinking it was simply funny and you would laugh at what he posted. He was sadly discouraged to know he was blocked when he was simply trying to, uh, he only found out he was blocked when he was trying to actually message you to ask a question for the podcast that he thinks is the greatest podcast of all time. So continuing on just some more information. His Twitter. What is his name once again? uh, J Kool-Aid W. He also has a lot of emojis in his uh, Twitter handle. How old is he? He's 27 years old. Okay. Two kids. We got a lot of parents so far. Every person that's gone to big guy court has a, uh, has usually quite the offspring. Uh, they have kids and they're followers of Jesus Christ and very strong believers in religion. Yet they are the most judgmental fucks on the face of the planet. You may continue. Yes, your humble big guy. Now, his Twitter profile reads as following. Hustle, loyalty, respect. Holy goddamn fuck. <laughs> he also... This is, is the fil- biggest fucking mark. Uh, he is a, his, uh, his background picture also is of, uh, is of John Cena. Uh, I believe yes. it's... Nothing it's wrong sh- with that. He's, it's, you're allowed to be John Cena fans. Uh, he also is a Philadelphia Eagles fan, so I apologize for representing such a piece of shit, and I don't mind if you find him guilty already. <laughs> he does you, you may proceed. He does not have a picture of himself on Twitter, so therefore I know he will appear guilty before I even say anything. It is a picture of... That doesn't seems, help. Does not help this case, but I will try, Your Honor. I will represent these fine people. Uh he has a picture of what happens to be an alcoholic beverage and an eagle's cap is his Twitter image. Is it a, a 40 by chance? It is, it is not. It appears to be a rocks glass with what looks to be potentially whiskey in it. I'm not exactly certain. When you say a, a rocks glass, do you mean like the rock, Dwayne Johnson, or a rocks glass? That would be awesome. Uh, uh, no, like a, an ice glass, a, a regular drinking glass. Okay. Not, that, ma- not, that, makes it, that makes it kind of better, I guess. No Brahma Bull. If you're going to be a fucking Mark, be a fucking Mark all the way, you know? So his offense was as followed. He's not aware of the date. However, it was during the time that this podcast was up and operational. He tweeted to you in what he claims was a very friendly way. The image was of people who think Cena sucks and can't wrestle. That was a two-part image. So the first I part, believe I remember this already. Keep going. Okay. So... <laughs> This was not long ago. I already know. They're... And on the, the part memory. that says, people who think Cena sucks and can't wrestle, it had several overweight men next to their computers with anti-Cena signs and one with a New Japan t-shirt. In the middle was uh, your honorable big guy's face, wide-eyed, smiling. Under this image, which had a, was a two-parter, it said, people that think Cena is great and definitely can wrestle – to which it had Austin Owens, Big Show, Flair, Jericho, Angle, and Punk. In yep. summary, my I client... I remember this one very well. My client was trying to point out the craziness that the internet puts up. He claims he was not trying to insult you, Your Honor. It did not come across as that in any way, shape, or form. The message that came across was he was trying to say that, that handicapped people and people of, of, of that sort um, are the ones that bash Cena... And these other people who are so-called credible because they are booked in a particular fashion and whatnot um, are credible. 
and with no mention whatsoever that it was a joke or funny and uh, I have no time for bullshit in my life. So he, is, he was blocked, blocked for life at that moment. Well, your honorable big guy, I have absolutely no defense going forward from this situation. I think it's kind of, I'm just trying to do my job here. So this is the, this is a fucking mark of the worst kind attorney buck. And uh, I apologize that you had to represent this low life piece of shit. If he never tuned into the podcast or followed anything that the big guy did for the rest of his life, I would not blink an eye at it. I find the fucking Mark guilty, guilty for fucking life and guilty for being a low life piece of shit. And I hope he dies a miserable fucking death. Fuck. Court is adjourned. Well, Jay Kool-Aid, uh, thanks for supporting the show. Uh, but you are guilty in the, in the big guy court. And uh, I am 0-3. My God. It's all right. You, you have a very hard job, Attorney Buck. You, you've done the fact that you're even associating yourself with these people. I commend you. And uh, I sympathize with you greatly. So it's um, all for the sake of the entertainment of our listeners. We're going to find one, though. I'm going to find one, and we're going to win this. Win oh, this, I'm, uh... I'm, I'm not against unblocking people, by the way. If people think I'm like, I'm not going to. If I believe a particular case... In person has a very yeah. valid. When people can't provide the screenshots either, they do themselves no favor. It's <laughs> a very their, tough their situation. Their timeline is so filled with so much bullshit they can't go back and find it. Like that is bad. So it's you know I've actually done a good job of blocking people over the years. I don't get a lot of hate anymore. So it's uh, life is nice, and not that I, I'm not. Uh, like outside of doing the promotional stuff on social media, uh, I'll retweet stuff occasionally, but I, 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 I've done a good job at not like, just like, I don't look at Facebook. I think our fans and any listeners out there listening, don't look at like the less time you spend on Facebook, the better <clears throat> it, it, it's just, it's such, there's so much bullshit out there and it's just such a waste of time. And there's, there's fake videos. You don't know what's real, what's fake. And like, I was going to tell you that United thing this week. Did you see the whole United video finally? No, you told me about that, I, I've, which is weird because you would think that maybe it'd be more prevalent in the media. I didn't see anything on it. You told me about it. Yeah, and you would, but that, that's, again, the media. It's all yeah. the, the guy, and he was being difficult beforehand. And, and it's, there's always more to the story than what you're being told. And, but people will put things out there to try to get whatever point they want to get across. And, it's unfortunate, and not to say that United handled it the right way, but if you saw the video, not that the guy was being violent, but he was definitely not budging, and he was okay. threatening him, oh, I'd like to see you get me off this plane, and like, or I'm not, you know, things of that nature, and like, it's just, it sucks, and then and we, we just, that, and Facebook and that stuff, not, it's not their fault necessarily, because they can't control what people post, mm-hmm. and what people believe in, but it comes down to people just being fucking self-aware, and being smarter and not buying into all the bullshit. And not just because you see something on TV thinking it's fact. It's because it's not. A lot of it's not. It's whatever the fucking business model is, what these people, what, what they want to get across, what's going to drive ratings. And like, God, it just, it's, we are so much smarter than this as a society, but we're not acting like it. But it is what it is. So when dumb breeds with dumb, you get fucking dumber. So. I am looking forward to this next part. We came up with this on a, on a whim today because it's kind of a slow week in the wrestling news and um, a shorter day of preparation for us to prepare. But I like this concept. Do you want to explain the next segment? Yeah, we don't always... We, we have fun on this show and we joke around and I talk about fucking marks, the negative fucking wrestling fans, not the good fans, not the people that are supportive of pro wrestling, that when I was a kid, I loved everybody and, and people like that. Or I, I didn't focus on who I didn't like or who I wasn't entertained by. I focused on what I liked and uh, with social media and things of that nature, <clears throat> fans have gotten uh, out of hand these days. And that is who we are talking about when we say fucking marks. And it's that small negative portion of fucking losers out there. Um, and also we- the people listening to the show too, we, granted we had the big guys court and that was pretty like, you know, volatile. It's all in a comedic sense. I think if you're listening to the show, you kind of get it. And it's, you know, you're, you're probably not, you know, you may Offended. have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Like uh, the people that listen to the show, they fucking get it. And I, I love that. 
But it's uh, we wanted to do a segment tonight from Mark to Shark, where uh, we help the fucking Marks out there, give them some advice. Five, we both came up with five different things um, for them to apply to their lives to get them from being a fucking Mark to a Shark to attacking life to getting hungry and being more than just a fucking Mark. And here's yeah. and uh, this is a personal thing too as well because I mean like. Look, I we're both in the wrestling business. My really only source of of living is is professional wrestling. That's that's my primary. And I mean, if for, I'm a pro wrestler, I love it. I, I mean, it, it's what I do. I do many things, but I, I'm a pro wrestler also. So I want to say the things I'm about to say, and probably for to me, it comes from a place of I want to see wrestling fans and the class of wrestling, or more so wrestling fans. I want to see them have a little bit more dignity, class, and just be better people and better represented. That makes sense. And all this stuff is coming from that just because most of the people that come to my show are fucking great. But then they're, but if you really test the barometer of a lot of things, it's just like, why do we, why do these things that we're about to talk about happen? That, well, at least my things, at least. You'll see. We probably have different, completely different things. But I just want to see a, a better class of wrestling fans. I think they could be, you know, because a lot of them come in and it's like they don't have a lot going on. And, no. you know, I'm sure it exists in all sports and everything. It all comes like, down to be the, where life has beaten them. and But wrestling is their outlet. But they have they've invested too much into that and not into other parts of their life, in my opinion. Yeah. And they could be doing so much better, and they won't. So maybe this is a little fucking kick in the dick to make that happen. Yep. Even if we help one person, which by the the results of this podcast, it's been more than one. So I am totally cool with that. Okay. You want to start with your first one? <clears throat> Number five for me, Pat. And, and this comes down to, to self-confidence. And it's brush and floss your teeth and use deodorant. Um, All right. Good hygiene is uh, something that... that, that a lot of fucking marks don't do. And uh, by doing so... And some of the it, boys. Very true. By doing so, you will, you will increase your self-confidence, thus improving your positivity and your mood, uh, and, and just increasing... I should say improving how you look at things. You're not always going to be so angry uh, and bitter um, because your hygiene will be in accordance to good health, so... Okay, mine's kind of along the same area, but mine is dress Go the get way. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> dress, dress the way you want to feel is more of a general term for this. Um, but I, but I find that. Let me continue on. I have a lot written down. So dress okay. the way you want to feel. If you are heavy, okay, that's great. Uh, but if you're a lot of a lot of, I think if you're going to a wrestling show, this is just my rule now. It sounds stupid, but. I think it's acceptable. Wear wrestling shirts. I think that's awesome. Wear wrestling hats. Yep. You know, however... That's the time to do it, yeah. Stop wearing fucking sweatpants. Uh, you know, it, it's... Essentially getting up off the couch and showing up to the event. Yeah, like, don't look like, hey, you want a wrestling shirt? Fucking cool. Put on a pair of jeans. Put on a pair of fucking slacks. Put on a nice pair of shorts. Crocs are unacceptable. Stop wearing those fucking things. Don't come to okay. a wrestling show in the middle of summertime wearing sweatpants and Crocs and a wrestling shirt. Deodorant is a must. I've had a lot of issues with people at my shows who other fans have been disturbed because there's a fucking stinky guy or stinky woman in the second or third row. It's fucking disgusting. Bod spray. If you can't afford cologne, which you can go to any Macy's, pick whatever you want you want. You can pick up some bod spray. It's like six bucks on Amazon. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of bod spray black, by the way. You got me back into it because I used to wear it in college and everyone used that, to make fun of me because I had all the different types. I had like 20 of them, man. And that then, stuff is a, is a puss magnet, by the way. <laughs> Not, no, so, no joke. In old Kalen Croft, who's a very good looking man, um, who, who's done well, he's now married, but he was always a bod spray black guy back in the day. And I get more compliments when I wear that than any other expensive cologne. And I, I order it on Amazon in three packs, and I it's my go-to. It's in plastic bottles so they don't break in my bag on the road. Mm-hmm. Bod spray black marks. It will fucking change your life. And I'm a bod spray really ripped abs. It's probably the most homosexual name really? for anything. Yeah. I like that too, but I was always I never I never got the compliments on that like I do with bod it's spray. It's not as black. strong. 
I like okay. it, but I noticed black will. I don't wear black that much, but when I saw you, when I visited you, I was like, you're still wearing bod? You're like, yeah. I'm like, man, I need to get this. Sh- I forgot about it completely. I, I always have a nice bottle of cologne here, too, and, and I wear it, and I don't get compliments, and I yep. switch it up. But I wear the bod spray black, and I kid you not, I can't tell you how many times a girl, like, they'll go, what are you wearing? And I go, my secret, and just smile at them <laughs> because I don't want to say, oh, it's a $7 bottle of bod spray black. Bod spray black from fucking Amazon or Walgreens. So, but yeah, I'm sharing it out on the podcast for the world to know. So dress the way you want to feel. And even like some of my, in my family does this too. And it kind of like upsets me. Um, you ever, when I was at the ER, you know, you get like the doctor socks, you know, oh, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like they're like, like very thin, like a, almost like a nylon, not nylon. They're very comfortable, but they're like the ones that have the little, the, the gripping on the bottom of them. Yeah. They're like, so you don't slip on the hospital floor. So someone in my family wears them, and like when I see that, I get really de- and they got a lot of health issues going on or a lot of oh. mental issues, and I go, "What the fuck are you wearing?" Because like that's putting yourself in the ER room when you put yep. those things on, playing you're, you're, the victim part. Like don't fucking do that shit. So how many fucking marks out there are walking around right now in a fucking Razor Ramon T-shirt and fucking hospital socks? I or, that, Finn, or Finn, I should catch up with the times. I'm like Finn Balor's shirt and fucking hospital socks. <laughs> Crocs, man. I, I think Crocs too, man. They make me fucking angry. Crocs right. are for people who gave up on life. All right, let's move on. I like that. That's a good start to all this. Number four for me is you don't watch a movie and then go and send personal threats to the actor. So don't fucking do it with wrestling. Quit wasting time on social media sending negative comments. Jesus, mine's exactly the same thing. Don't complain on Holy Twitter. Holy shit. This, by the way, we both compiled our list earlier after talking. and We didn't talk is, about it. Fuck. So This is why we're great... best fucking fr- Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's do karate in the garage. So uh, don't complain on Twitter, Facebook, or social media. But if you do so, uh... you know, if you don't like something, be witty and be polite. Like... Don't just, you know, realize your lip, but also here's the thing too. realize if you want a successful fucking life, whether you start your own business or you're working for somebody, because that's really the only option is you're putting shit out there that job recruiters will use against you. You think they want to see you fucking go on a 10 minute, you know, cursing spree because you didn't like fucking the way Baron Corbin beat Dan Ambrose, Dean Ambrose, like (laughs) shit like that. Like (laughs) very good. That's a very good point that I never really Stuff lives forever on social media for everybody. So, and on top of that, here's a crazier fucking story. So, um, there's someone, not only that for people, cause a lot of this too, I'll relate, I'll relate to people getting in wrestling because I see people at the, the early levels, wrestling students, whatever. So here's a crazy fucking thing. So there's not many of us quote wrestling managers or agents, whatever that actually do bookings for people. There's someone out there that's actually representing people and it's fucking scary right now. Okay. Uh, I looked at this person's Facebook today because I was sharing uh, me and another person were talking about this particular person. I know it sounds weird, but um, about how they have no real background doing it and shouldn't be doing it. And uh, when I looked on their profile, I was like, cause I'm friends with them on Facebook. All I saw was, uh, or a couple posts, but they were bashing people in wrestling like literally like a fan, like fucking, and they were ripping on Cody and they were saying things like, like really like what a, what a, what a hateful fan would. And this is somebody that's trying to make a living claiming to be a wrestling agent. That's in really? control of someone's bookings right now. Do you want to name the name or no? No, nah, I just want to keep it out because like it, it probably be easy to figure out, but like seeing is he an older, like, older gentleman or no, we're not even in the same ballpark. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, like, uh, it could be a woman. Just oh, say it. like all it's right, all right, gotcha. It was mind blowing to me. It was like, holy fuck, you want to be in this industry, but you think you can do that? Like, come yeah. on, man. Like that's the that's one of the illnesses of being a fucking mark is it just lets you you think you could do whatever you want, like or you think that your opinion is so important and like not to say that it isn't, but you, you shouldn't be sharing it on social media of all places. So All right. Let's see if we have the same one for this one. I, I I don't know if we will on this one. Number three, and again, these are all things that by doing so, you will just improve your life, thus decreasing your f- level of being a fucking mark. Uh, switch from Pop-Tarts and Fruity Pebbles to Wheaties and Oatmeal. Be a man and quit being a little bitch. 
Grow Love the it. fuck up. That's number three for me. <laughs> that was good. Mine is, again, very specific for wrestling. Do not force your kids to like wrestling. Very they, great point. If they do like it, cool. If they don't, stop. I can't. I'm sure you experience this. Sometimes I've had people, not for me, but for the people I bring in, but it has happened to me a couple times that, you know, my son, you're my, you're my daughter's favorite or you're my son's favorite, or I've seen it with, you know, people. And that they have, have no clue who the fuck you are. Not only that, there's yep. been times where I'm like, your fucking kid can't speak. How yeah. the fuck? Like. He's one. He's barely pointing. How the fuck? Like, I know what happens to, you know, people with, exp- I'm sure it's happened to you a ton of times. Um, absolutely. I, I, my big thing on that is I, and this is every wrestler in WWE or I'm sure Impact or any other promotion knows. To me, the most discouraging thing are the people that bring their kids to the airport at two, three, four in the morning. Ugh. And keep them up all night uh, for them to get their th- stuff signed. Not the kids, for them, for mm-hmm. them to go and sell when they sell their action figures. And it is a very real thing. And it is very, it's so, I don't even care if it, it there, and I'm sure there's select cases where the kid really wants to meet the wrestlers. Be a parent and have your kids sleep and go to school the next day. Don't keep them up all night to then let them stay home from school or something of that nature. Like, yeah, it, it that it, people don't understand. Like wrestlers look at you guys and like you guys are pieces of shit. And, like it's just really you are. And like the, and it, that's what sucks about life. Things with kids not having kids that have parents like that are at such a disadvantage just in life. And not all of them are, are going to be held down for the rest of their lives. But uh, a select few will will figure out. Like God damn, I have shitty parents. Like and and, and kick out, but. It is. It fucking sucks, man. Like it's. I wouldn't. I. I look at that. I always felt bad. Kids would be asleep, sitting there, and their parents. Oh, it's for my kid. Like, it is. Whether it is or isn't, go home and fucking sleep. It's yeah. Three in the morning. It's four in the morning. Like, let us fly out. God, it sucks. Fucking. I know what you're talking about on that. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. Number, Number two. two this you want to switch again. it up, or maybe I'll what go this mean? one. You go ahead. You let's say let you do number two. <clears throat> okay. Do not uh, do not let wrestling be your only obsession in life. Uh, wow. I think, I think that uh, pa- uh, passion's one thing, but you can't like a lot of wrestling fans are like. Well, I have a lot of passion. I don't think you can have passion for something unless you're trying to make a career out of it. If that makes any sense for this particular case, like yeah. you know, I may have you know, I love comic books and stuff, but. You know, it's kind of an do you obsession write, Do you me. write to comic book writers and tell them they're pieces of shit for things they've done or comic book? Uh, I have not. Not, the, not yet. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but have other interests, you know, because here's the thing. If you're your only obsession, I'm going to bring up a guy. I don't know if you knew him very well. Um, he was an OVW person, but he was he was a guy that moved there to train. He didn't really. I don't even know. If, I don't think he may have never even been on an episode of TV. But I'll say his name. His name was Specs. Do you remember a guy named Specs? I remember that name uh, mildly, but I don't know. I can't remember him by off the top of my head. I remember that name, though, I feel like. He looked like a, okay, if Brock Lesnar was my size. So he had like, he he was shorter. Oh, I think I do remember this guy. And he had glasses. I was drunk mostly during that whole period. So, (laughs) no, seriously, like drunk all the time. But yeah. So anyway, um we all knew he was really obsessed with wrestling, but like he was to a point where it was so obnoxious. Like he went to training every day and he wasn't very, he wasn't very good. He was learning, whatever. I'll give him that much. I say something too. I always hate when independent wrestlers do moves of the guy big, like when guys do like F fives and like other signature things of guys trying to be like that guy. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get, I, I don't know why, but I get it. You could do it's, but and and I used to, I've done it in OVW. I did the FI before for like, and it was stupid. Like I just be your own individual. Yeah, and my rule is if you're gonna take from wrestling, I take from people that aren't wrestling anymore or they're dead. Like that's just yeah, yeah. There is only uh, so much to, but I, I but there's times when people do it to just like be like that person. Yeah, and I'm just like, come on. There are times though where I'll go full Mark mode, uh, and just completely do 
if I'm in a multi-man match Pat, and I realize... Pat, Pat Cena? Oh, I've done Cena's comeback plenty of times on shows. Oh, you've had to. It's your Pat Cena. As me, though. But uh, oh. oh, wait, really? Yeah, because sometimes I've wrestled in shows before. I'm like, guys, they've, they've seen everything. It's fucking... Oh, this really changes everything. Listen, here's the situation. Oh, so, I'm really fucking disappointed by this. Listen, so... Tackle, if you're on a tackle, smart tackle, mark show... Fucking tackle, duck, fucking little gimmicky slam. Well, here's why. Let me explain myself. Only in multi-man matches. So, like, I'm in a multi-man match. I'm like, they've fucking seen everything. There's so many matches on this show. I go, at one point, let's just, you know, we'll, we'll have a competitive match, get all of our stuff in, but then I'll do Cena's, you do Are this you one. Are you a fan of John Cena, Pat? And secretly? Of course, like, who isn't a fan of John Cena? Well, no. I'm not. I, I've done Christ. Cena's, I've done Orton's, I've done, like, it's just a playful spot and then you get back to your own original stuff since you're the promoter and you're my manager i'll let you slide listen god damn it i might want to bring you to the big guy's court eventually (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna put you have you ever been in a six six man matchup yeah i I hate tags you know that no 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 not tags i'm talking about six men scramble match Oh, the six man scramble. Like multi man match. Not the fatal four way, but a six man scramble. Six man scramble. Complete chaos. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if I've ever done six. I want to put you in one and then you you start going, oh fuck, let's I've done I've done fatal four ways on the fly before and like and we they all work out. You just fucking you just go. It's a different it's a different. You start suplexing guys, guys sell, you could kinda could keep things under control. Okay. But go ahead. I get it. Um, It is it's not easy. I get it. I don't know how we got here. So anyway, oh, so Specs, this guy would only, this is what creeped me out. He went to training every day. He would only read books if they related to wrestling. He would, only lis- he would only listen to music. Any, he wouldn't listen to any song unless it was wrestling music or related unless somehow was, to wrestling. Unless Jim Johnson was the fucking creator of it. It was, but it was like, but like, no, he would listen to a song if it was from like a wrestling movie. It was creepy, yeah. man. It was like, I what the he would, and if you made him listen to something else, he'd get mad. He's like, "It's a waste of time." It's like yeah. you're so fucking ignorant. Like fuck, Limp Biscuit. Oh wait, he did WrestleMania X Seven. Okay, cool, I can listen to it. Literally, that was it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that made me sick. I don't know. All right, that no, that's very fair and very good. My number two is read the mystery method: how to get beautiful women into bed, and <laughs> by doing so, you will get more pussy. And this is for the men out there. Um, and I always say read it, but still be an honest, good human being and alter the suggestions in there to being a real, honest human being and attract more beautiful women into your life and you will be happier and you will not feel the need to be so angry all the time and go and talk shit to other people and be a fucking mark. All right. And the precursor of that is The Game by Neil Strauss, which is a very good book that don't they, that's too difficult for them. That's an actual book, but okay. Keep the, the mystery method has techniques and tactics for them that I feel like that they, 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 they we're dealing with fucking marks, Buck. We don't real reading is we, that might be below them. So now what is your number one? My number one kind of ties in a little bit to what you just said. And I really feel like this will really help them. It's read one book a month on successful people and have other interests and hobbies so that your entire existence doesn't revolve around bitching about fake fighting. All right. And that's one book a month on a successful person, 12 books a year, audiobooks or real books, and I promise you, you will be in a better place one year from now. My number one is a, uh, is a mixed bag. So my number one is if you really think that you can just continue on your ways or tweet whatever you want or you have that right, do me a favor. Take a few classes in wrestling school. I don't care if it's, you know, for a month. I don't care take, if it's a couple. Take one class in wrestling Take one school. class. Yeah. And that, a pro- oh, one is more than enough. And go there and put yourself just through one pro wrestling workout where you have to do some things. And even if you quit after your first lesson. Just Which you most likely will. Just go in there and realize what the fuck goes into it. And if you want to sign up for professional wrestling, you can go to creativeprowrestling.com <laughs> to learn from the best in New York and New Jersey. That's my number How one. many fucking marks have you had show up that quit pretty quick? I've had, um, there's a lot of like, and, and here's the thing. I don't, I don't fucking ever judge a book by its cover because there, there can be some unassumingly at, uh, athletic people that don't look that way. Yeah, but then yeah there's a, absolutely. There's been the opposite too. So I've had people... Um, 
for example, there was, there was one time that was crazy. I was working with a, a student and he wasn't doing something right. And I got a little frustrated and I get frustrated from time to time. And, um, you know, I, I do you he, hit him with an attitude adjustment after that? No, listen, man, <laughs> I think the lesson was selling and stuff like that. And he, he really wasn't even trying and long story short, I just like, I was kind of like, look, like, you know, if, if you don't do that, people may get even rougher with you and let me show you whatever. And he left at the back door. He like snuck out never to come back again. Oh, yeah. What a horrible thing. I've had people that have, uh, you quit after the first time I've had, you know, a lot of that, or, or I had one guy that, I don't know. A lot of people think that it's, it's going to be for them. And I'll be like, look, it's, it's painful. It, it sucks. Yep. Um, I had one parent condition. They, they underestimate the conditioning, the technique. Every single time. Yeah. They're like, I'm Wait, like, we're going to hit the road. This isn't as for- easy as it looks on TV because these guys are actually really good. And like, they, they, like I'll be like, look, you're going to run the ropes for a minute. They're like, oh, that's easy. They run, they're dead. They're fucking yep. dead. Lactic know? acid kicks in and life fucking sucks. Oops. That's why everybody's not successful. And let alone the butt, like they don't understand what a roll or a bump feels like. And they're just. Unless they re- look down at their stomach usually. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just being honest. This, the majority, this is honestly the majority of fucking marks. So I don't feel bad about it. You, they, you fight back fire with fire. It's the only way. Mm-hmm. But, and we're giving them advice to try to help them. So hopefully they take it. If we help one out of every 15 fucking marks, we're doing a good job. Again, if you listen to this show, you're probably. You know, as arrogant as it is, you're on the right track. These are all things just give you a little kick in the dick. Realize, be better than yes. what's around you. You know, absolutely. The feed me more mindset mentality. With that, Buck, uh, do you have anything you want to go ahead and get in before we uh, end tonight's broadcast? Uh, no, just again, thank you guys for listening. Please check out uh, the you know rate, review, subscribe. Actually, I want to give a thank you to Shad Gaspard. He told me he was a big fan of the podcast. Oh really? Kind of, yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Who's it's doing really cool? You know, good things. Stevie for Richards actually. Uh, shout out to Stevie Richards. He told me uh, what, your Russell Pro Show at WrestleCon that he he listens to the podcast. I go really. So it was. Uh, that's always cool oh, yeah. to know that, that your uh, fellow coworkers out there are listening and uh, enjoying it. So yeah, Stevie's a man. But you can follow me on all platforms. Uh, Buck never stops. I believe you had the one. Sorry, Takedown Piracy? Yep, I wanted a, a big thank you to Nate at Takedown Piracy. Uh, Takedown Piracy is an anti-piracy service who is protecting our podcast from being ripped off. And if you guys want to go ahead and uh, look into that for anything that you got going on, uh, go ahead and uh, reach out to Nate at Nate at TakedownPiracy.com. They're super easy to work with, and they get great results. So thank you, Nate, very much for that. I'm Ryback22 on Twitter. At the big guy Ryback22 on Instagram and Ryback247 on Snapchat. You have just listened to another episode of Conversation with the Big Guy. Thank you guys. America's largest indoor water park is now open in the Poconos, and you're not going to want to miss it. Hear the whoosh as you zoom down one of the many hair-raising water slides. Feel the splash of the wave pool, the thrill of the kids' play area, or the rush of indoor surfing at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions in the Poconos. Book your stay.